All right, let's do this thing. Can you hear that? Hello? Hello. Yes, I think they can hear you. So you're okay, am, I, am I coming through clear? Can you? Yeah, okay? yeah. So apparently your name is Jim. Uh, yep, that's correct. I'm Jim. Okay. So, Jim, what? Right. how can I help you? Well, first, I just want to make sure, is the audio coming through all right for you? Sometimes my Skype is a little iffy. No, oh, everything is fine. Okay. Yeah, uh, bit, well, the level's a little high, so just, let me just get that right. Yep. Okay, it's good. We're good to go? Yeah, the audience out there, I have to say, they're all got, waiting. They're like... It feels a little bit like, you know, the Romans and the whatever, you know. Well, they, they've come for bread and circus, yeah. For a circus, yeah. Is this what you do? Uh, well, no. I, you know, if you remember, you're the one who initiated contact with me on Twitter. Oh, I, I, I know. I, I responded. Absolutely. I responded to a tweet of yours. So then the, uh, from there ensues a, uh, well, a discussion. Before we even get into the, uh, I, I guess, before we even get into your response to that tweet, let's talk about that tweet itself, because that seemed to be what grabbed your attention. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that was a tweet to Sean Murray for the the Twitter handle No Man's Sky. That was the devs account that I was responding to. Yeah. I had made a 30-second video, and people can look on, on my Twitter if they know what it is. They'll see the video that I'm referring to, uh, basically mocking Sean Murray and uh, implying that the reason that any update was released on the 27th is because it was one day before Cyber Monday, which is an enormous sales day online. People are buying products from online shopping stores and wherever they can get it, and that the timing was quite coincidental considering that he had been radio silent for about three months before that update and that information was released. Uh, and you seem to take offense to that. No, I took offense to your treatment of the subject and the way you're treating a game developer. But let me just ask, it's yep. like, what issue do you, because it's a bit difficult with those kind of like, should we say tabloid delivery of a, of, a, of a position, is exactly what is it that you took exception to in that whole little story that you've described? What is it that I have? Uh, what's my umbrage with uh, Sean Murray, particularly? Yeah. Uh, I, I, okay. No, 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 well, no, 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 no. Let's not oh, get off track. I'm talking about the, the actual tweet itself. What in your tweet? That particular thing, you know, because I think if I get, if I understand it correctly, basically, you took umbrage at the fact that they released the game, the patch, I should say, or, or the update. They released the update just before that important. We don't Sales have day. it here, but over because I'm I'm actually in the Netherlands, but you you you're in America, right? You're, you're yeah, yeah. It's an on, it's an online sales. It follows on Black Friday, so it's yeah. uh, the Monday after. Yeah, it's the Monday the Monday after. The, yeah, exactly. So so if I understand correctly, you 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 took umbrage at the fact that of the timing of the release. Well, yeah. If you want to understand why particularly I took umbrage with that and why I'm mocking Sean Murray, it would go back to his development cycle of promise after promise after promise of what that game was going to be, luring in a ton of people to buy his product, and then failing to deliver on any of that. Well, okay, but this is, let me, we, we know that that's a whole other big story, right? But it's like we can't bite off more, we can't bite off too big a chunk, and then we, we, we'll choke on it, right? So we just, let's, let's, let's look well, at that no, bit. You, you, look, you're let's look at that bit first of all. You're because, asking me for my explanation. I'm trying to give it to you. Sure, sure. But I'm I, just, John Murray is a con artist. Well, I understand that's when what When he you releases think. his update a day before Cyber Monday, yeah, yeah. I, I see that as just uh, as him pandering to get more sales. Yeah, I yeah. see that as not a genuine update of, here, I want to make it right by the consumer. I see that as, how can I sucker more people into buying a product that has been panned universally by the people that purchased it and by reviewers for failing to deliver on the key features he said was going to be implemented on the original sales day? We, are, we know what the story is, and there are different viewpoints of that, but I just want to just put... A kind of alternative scenario right? Go ahead. because yeah i know what you're saying but like you're not a you're not a game developer are you no i'm a customer right yeah so you've never developed a video game nope never developed a video game do you know what's involved in developing a video game is it something special that's different from any under, or any other industry that delivers a product that they say is going to be like the product? If I buy a car and drive it off the lot and the brakes don't work, do I say, well, I can't take umbrage. They're just a car manufacturer. Yeah, there's a difference, though, because the process of making a car is very different to the process of making a video game, which is why I'm asking. Do, what do you know about the process of making a video game? What's different in the process of selling an honest product? and selling what you promise it's going to be. Because well, in both of those industries, it doesn't matter at the point where you're selling to the consumer. Yeah, yeah. But point this, of purchase is different development. But my, the point here is, 
is that if you understand what's involved in making a video game, then you'll understand what the motivation probably was behind certain things that you see. So, in other words, I mean, I'm not going to argue with you on the fact that when, when a developer releases a video game, if there are people who don't like the video game, they don't like the video game. Okay, and then they can this feel is, this upset. We, we understand this that. Isn't about, no, no, no. This but isn't what about you were doing? One sec, one sec, sec, one sec. What you were doing? What you were doing in your what you were doing in in your argument was reading into what the developer's motivation was. And I'm trying to say, if you understand the process of making a video game, you can see that there may well not have been that motivation to it. Not directly anyway, not in a cynical way. OK, it's the cynicism that you're referring to. And it's the cynicism is I feel I'm misplaced. And I say that as someone who's been making games for a very long time. So in other words, right, the problem yeah. is that You've got your perspective and the game developer has their perspective. The game developer's perspective is often uh, in a world that is very complex, where it's very difficult to even just get the product to ship. OK, and your perspective is one of just being a customer who gets a product, uh, has expectations for the product arrives, either the expectations are met or not. OK. No. Well, no, 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 no. You can't say as a software developer that, that it's some kind of special profession where you're given leeway to explicitly lie to the consumer no, because it's not. a tough I mean, job. You should never no, lie. No, yeah, I agree. Well, you should Sean, absolutely agree That's what agree Sean with Murray you. did. Did, well, not, did that... he not lie to people and say that there would be multiplayer, that there would be features that were never included, yeah. that they had to go and reprint labels for boxes that were already shipped yeah, because yeah, they're yeah, 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 worried that... about online components uh, getting lost. The reason I said let's not because with, I could talk about that all day too, but I want to talk because if you want to understand why I took umbrage at your tweet, it's the, I'm, I'm explaining to you why it has to do with the process. Now you you might just if you might feel justified in doing well, that. Explain because of the, the process history. to me then. Explain what makes it so special that you can lie and deliver a bad. No, product no, the don't try to put words. And expect the consumer no, to accept it. That's unfair. No, no, you're putting words in my mouth. I'm not going to, I'm I'm not going to try to justify that. Just of what you're telling me is that it's a hard job, so we should give them more leeway. Right. That's Let's bullshit. try and find a bit of common ground, right? Do you think oh, it's okay. ever right to lie? Uh, there could be justifications for it, I suppose, in some absurd scenario where if you don't lie, some kid's going to get murdered. Okay, so really what it means is, is that it, if you accept that there are some situations where lying is acceptable, it becomes, in the end, the motivation for the deception. Uh, this is nothing connected with video games. I'm going philosoph talking philosophically here. Okay. Okay. The intention. It is the intention that that matters, right? I thought because you said it yourself. In some situations, okay, intention matters. Well. Um, if we live in a world where it's possible that any of us could lie to anyone else, how do we ever get along? That's called trust. That's the purpose of trust. The purpose of trust is that, you know, because there is no written hard and fast rule about every single way that we should behave, then the way that we manage to get along as people is that we trust each other. And the trust comes from the idea that people do something because they are motivated uh, in a positive way. They have a positive intention. Would you agree? Oh, okay, so I, I just want to make this clear here. You're you're going to take this into a philosophical discussion rather than a simple business matter. Well, because, because that's the only the only way you can defend it. The, the it, it <laughs> is with generalities. You can't specifically talk you about Sean Murray and my, my No, one moment. When you say the word lie, the problem I, I have with that is that it you, what appears to be a lie to you, right, might not actually turn out to be intended as a lie or might not actually I don't, be I don't a lie care what his concept. intention was he lied at the end of the day he did not deliver the features he promised right. and we didn't so, find out about that until we bought the product that's bullshit that is your no, view me, and you're entitled to that that view. is the reality that that's is why your people view. are upset no, what? wait a minute that's your view that's not a reality it is a view what do you mean that's not a reality? Are, are you kidding me? Well, Have you not seen the reaction? Did he not say there would be an online component that whoa, people could whoa. interact with each other well, in the I game and I, never You never know what, mate? I don't... I would have to answer that question honestly. I would have to actually go back and research all the things that were said. Okay? So, I'm not going to argue with you on that one. What I'm going to say is... So you defended is, a man who if, you don't even know what he said. You just jumped in because you saw me talking to a game dev who lied to people. Do you want to understand? No. Do you want to understand why I said that or not? I'm trying to explain it.
You just said you don't know what he said, so you can't judge whether he was lying or not. So why did you defend him if you but don't you even know the truth? you were talking about him lying. In the yes, tweet. we were. Not in the tweet. Not in what I was reacting to. What I was talking at what I was reacting is what I'm trying to explain to you. What I was reacting to was that you took the view that it was cynical for the game dev to wait until the day before that Monday to release the game. Yeah, I'm saying he's that? a fucking greedy thief. You're right. That's oh, exactly wait a minute. How what did I'm we saying. get to that's, that? That's not implication. Well, that's we a go, direct you go, We go from... So that's quite a jump there. How is that a jump? I just explained no, you no, at the no, start wait of the minute. conversation. That's, quite, that's, that's what quite I a jump. All right, let's just say for a minute that everything that you said is true about okay. what happened before. Up until the day the game was released. Okay? I happen to disagree. And there are other people who happen to disagree. But let's just say that by some kind of objective scale you were you were right. Then we have to look at what's happened since. Okay. I don't care what's happened since. He's well, already you're ripped talking people about off. What, now, wait a minute. You are talking about, because your thing was about what happened since. They released an update. You're talk, that's what I'm talking about. I'm so talking do you, about the do you update. think he's redeemed himself? Do you think he saw the light and came to Jesus and released did the patch because he really cares? Did, did I say that? No, I didn't uh, no, I'm say asking that. you a question. I didn't say you said it. I said, do you think he's seen the light and come to Jesus and wants to release a update Jesus because he feels so it, bad? Actually, sorry, that was a bit confusing. What's Jesus got to do with it? I, 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 it's it's a turn that. of phrase. Did he you see the light? Did he come to Jesus? Do well, I you know think what I'm talking about. What yeah, you're, no, no, no. What you're saying is, is, do you agree with me and my exact perspective on exactly Sean Murray and all the rest of it? And you just set up the situation where you said, let's go with the assumption that everything you said is correct, that Sean Murray is a lying, greedy motherfucker. No, I didn't I say said, that. You just did. Rewind the no. stream. Of okay, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, shh. Okay, all right. What I said was, let's just go for a minute to say, okay, let's just believe for a minute that you're, that reality that you had was Right, and one, so right? going no, up let's just, Let's just say that. that. I disagree with it, but let's go with that, right? Just say if that's okay. the case. Then, because you have that view... You then can only see what happened since in a certain way. Now, what about an alternative explanation? Oh. You mean something other than objective reality? Okay, what's no, the alternative yeah, explanation? I mean, it's the problem with objective reality. If it's objective and real? Okay. Well, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. No, I've got a different opinion to you about what happens after that point. Okay. Okay. I have a completely different view, which is based on years of experience of being a game developer, which is why I, I said, do you know anything about the, the video game industry? I, I don't need to know anything about the video yes, game do. industry. I'm you a do. customer purchasing to, a product. I don't give a shit to, what your rationale for releasing a bad product is. Then I'm don't the guy try, that gave you money for it. Then don't try to tell the developer what they were thinking or intending if you don't I don't understand. give a shit what yes, they you were do, thinking or intending. They're robbing did. people by releasing a no, broken product. You do care because you put a value judgment on what they were doing, you are trying to say what their intentions were. I'm calling were. a thief a thief. Yeah, no. you're right. I'm absolutely calling a thief Sorry. a thief. Sean Murray is a lying thief. Point of order there. That was the bit that we just said, okay, let's draw a line on there and just go with the idea that that viewpoint was true. I'm talking about what's happened since. And I'm telling you in response to that, I don't care if he came to the light, if he saw Jesus, if he said, okay. I'm going to release this because I truly believe I've done wrong and I want to make amends. My point is he's already robbed so many people. If he wanted to make amends, he would have gone out publicly and said, I released a product that I lied about. I released a product that was broken. I released a product on promises well, that were never feel, delivered. Maybe he doesn't feel that's the case. They had a tweet they sent out where they said, no man's, I, uh, no man's Sky was a mistake, and then they deleted it. And then they played a game where they said, oh, our Twitter account's been hacked because they said that. How do you no, know? Sean Mur how, how do I know that he wasn't hacked? Because that's the Internet 101 when somebody fucks up and wants to say, oh, I didn't really do that. Oh, I've sorry, been that's, that's just circumstantial. And also the tweet, I, I hear that tweet. You know the way I read the tweet? I read the tweet as, oh, my God. I don't know when it was timed, but when I just, it depends on the timing, right? So I don't have the facts there. Maybe you can tell me because you seem to be an expert on it. Exactly I am what an the expert on getting, I'm an expert was. on when people uh, spread bullshit, which is what Sean Murray's doing. I'm an absolute expert on that. I can sniff it out. You're right. I, I am an yeah, expert. Yeah, so it just depends on the timing, but it, leaving aside the timing, which might prove this viewpoint to be incorrect, I don't know. But if I'd seen that, what I would have thought that developer was saying was, shit, we didn't expect this to get this kind of vitriolic reaction uh, maybe you know i there's a regret to having even bothered to try and make the game in the first place and that's because i'm likely to take that viewpoint because i'm a game developer right and i can understand how you take the other viewpoint but the point here is is what was the purpose of your tweet 
my the purpose of my tweet is to take the piss out of him. The Why purpose of my tweet to... is to remind him that he's a fucking con artist and to what? remind other people not to believe his bullshit. That's the purpose of my tweet. Well, I, I was, I'm getting a bit confused here because basically the purpose of your tweet is to spread your perspective. So are you saying the purpose of my opinion is to give my opinion? Yes, that's that would be the purpose of an opinion. Is it? Is that the only purpose of an opinion? What okay, what were the what would the other purposes of an opinion be? Well, you have an opinion one that's open to change. It's an opinion in the end is a is a model of the world. And if if you can argue it well, other than oh, it's so tough being a game dev and Sean Murray's a great guy, you're gonna have to give me more than that. He's sitting on hundreds of millions I, of dollars from I the have, sales of that game. I have no idea the character of Sean Murray. I don't know him. So then why would you defend him and jump in because he's to a that conversation? Because he's a game developer and I think you were treating... So it's, it's, it's camaraderie. The only reason you care is because you're a game developer too. You don't give a shit about the customer. You care because <laughs> you develop games. I care about the customer and I know that Hello Games care about their customers too. How do you know that? Because I know. No, how do you know that? You just said that I couldn't know these things. So how do you know Sean Murray gives a shit? How do you know he's not sitting there right now laughing at people because upset about his game? You know how? Because I have trust in that camaraderie now if i'm shown to be wrong what but that's not the point here the point is why the disrespect because why should argument... i why should i trust your trust i'm the guy <laughs> putting money down you it's not your to, money you is it? are you buying to, me games you don't need to trust my trust you're right i get screwed as a consumer you having faith that's in somebody doesn't make the purchase better that's your view that you were screwed as a consumer and we have to respect that no, that's not just my view. Go look at the reviews for his game. Load up Steam and take a look at No Man's Sky. No, no. Load up Steam and take a look at No Man's Sky. It is one of the most negatively reviewed games possible with the most refunds that have been given. Yes. Well, this is known. This is known. And it's very interesting because, so then, it also, that just my because the game also has an audience. There are also people who love the game. Yeah, I've, you've said this before on Twitter. You said, oh, it's got an audience. Well, like I responded to you, a guy taking a shit in the street has an audience too. It doesn't mean what he produced is valuable, does it? That is true, and I think I agreed with you, and I said that is true, but I'm not exactly sure how that's relevant here. My, my point is you're trying to say because it has an audience, it has worth. That's bullshit. A majority of the people that no, bought the I didn't product say were upset that. with the product. I didn't say because it has an audience, it has... Well, that's what you're... That's what I'm you're saying that you're that saying it has, it has an, audience. an audience of people who like it. There are people who actually <laughs> like the game. Do you understand that? Yeah, I understand yeah, that. There are yes, people who like, like the game. There are people that kept the game. Yeah, it, no, when it, they like you the wanna, game. No, no, no. Not, just like, wanna... not just kept the game. They like the game. Okay, there you want to people... talk numbers? No, no, no. You want to talk numbers? Let's I... talk numbers. Why, when when why No Man's Sky numbers? came on Steam, it had 250,000 so current players. Seriously a minute, mate. 250,000, a quarter Seriously of a minute. Seriously a minute, mate. A what a million. the hell do the numbers matter? Just for the I'm moment. Gonna, you want to talk numbers about people liking the game. It had 250,000 people playing it I wasn't talking numbers about people. I, I just am, said that I am people. talking I understand. about it. 250,000 when why? it came out. It's got 3,000 now. Why do you want it's to talk numbers? It's lost 247,000 Why do you want to talk numbers all the time? I'm not saying it's wrong. I want to know your motivation. I want to know your motivation for the numbers. Not saying that it's wrong. Why? That's what I'm telling you. Let me finish. Okay. A quarter of a million people were playing it concurrently when it launched. Now it's got 3,000. 247,000 people stopped playing No Man's Sky just on PC, just on Steam as a platform. If you want to say people liked the game, let's put that idea into perspective. 3,000 out of 247,000 liked the game. So why, you know, the point here is, is that even if that's true, what right do you have to go around accusing the game dev of doing anything but their best. And what right do I have to make a judgment call based on a behavior of a person? Every right, just what, like anybody else. What right do you have to read into that with any justification, statistical justification, the intention of the developer when you do not know what was going on during the development and what it takes to make a video game and also the complications of PR of a video game. 
uh, well, first off, like I said earlier, I don't care what the uh, the and if process. You don't care, of... you shouldn't make a commentary on it. Are you going to let me finish? Or are you going to just get jabs in? Uh, like I said, I don't care what the difficulties involved in making a video game are. I look at it from a customer's perspective. Any product that's put on the market with a promise of how it's going to be should live up to that promise. I'm giving you money I worked for. If you lie to me to get that money, I don't give a shit what your justification is, what your rationale. I or agree. Is. Yeah. Okay. I agree with you on that. So then, by an objective measure, we have to look at the the thing that the Advertising Standards Authority have ruled that there was no uh, misleading. Oh, okay, I want you to go look at clips of Sean Murray telling people like Stephen Colbert, telling people at IGN, telling people on Game Awards that it was going to have multiplayer, that it was going to have all these features built in. Yeah, you can run into other people. Yeah, you can have interactions with people in multiplayer. And then a day before launch, they redo their packaging because they don't... It, 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 with no explanation, it's just uh, the game's launched. Oh, by the way, there's no multiplayer. Yeah, I'm Thanks for saying... everybody pre-ordering the game and giving us money on a promise we never delivered on. Yeah, or I, delivered you know... on. Thanks and, for giving us the money. And if that's the case, then that would be bad. And I'm not going to assess whether or not that was the case. The only reason why I'm going to be cagey about that one is because it's complicated. When uh, a you can, right, like wait a minute, said, wait a minute. Let me explain why it's complicated. When, a, when a, a game developer is making a game, they will often talk about their aspirations for the game. But as they build the game, right, those aspirations are not going to be so... Um, one second... Yep. This. Take your time. Uh, one second. I just need to. I'm not going anywhere. I just need to check something, okay? Because life goes yeah, that, on, all right? That, so I'll be right yeah, back. That's fine. Hi, you still there? You, yep, I'm still yeah. there. Look, so we're going a bit around in circles, okay? So look, let's just, can I just sort of set a moti the motivation for my response? Can you at least understand where we're coming from? I understand where you're coming from, okay? From the point of view of a customer who felt that they were misled, okay? Yep, okay, go if, ahead. We to sum if we want to summarize it, okay? You felt you're misled, you buy the game, the game's disappointing. You think that you're not alone and that there's a majority there. I'm not saying you think because there's a doubt in your mind or I'm not. I'm just saying it's what you think. Right. And uh, then you wonder why I took exception. And this is where it gets tricky. Right. Because people find it difficult to detach one issue from the other. And I'll, can I just describe what I think the story is? Yeah, go ahead. Right. Which is I don't know. OK, but nor do you really you, because I'm going to guess. And so you're guessing, too. That's my point. And but because I am a game developer and I know about making games, um, maybe this other perspective might be helpful. If we say that, you know, there is no doubt whatever the intention was, the effect was as you describe and that there are that's the way a lot of people felt. OK. So what would you what would you do? Or what would I do if I was in that situation? I want to make it right. So the first thing is, well, if we make it right, what do we do? Now, there was always planned additional content. This is known. The silence thing. When the crowd are booing, all right, maybe it's good to stop trying to communicate where your words get twisted and just put your head down and work on the product. So it seems like that's what they've done. They've worked on the product and they have released an update, which from what I have seen is being well received. Might not in your mind make up for whatever evil do deeds in your mind, not being sarcastic, but they are what you think, right? And the, what other people think. It's not saying it would make up for that. In fact, it's an irrelevance as far as I'm concerned. It's up to you whether it makes up for it or not. I mean, you know, 
but I'm talking about what the developer will have done. To do this patch in that period of time will have required an awful lot of work, but also requires an awful lot of risk management, which means that you might have in mind what you want to release, but because video game development is unpredictable, and this is the huge difference that I was alluding to, you can want to put so much into your game that you may well find that you have to cut because of problems with the schedule, because of problems, unexpected things turning up. Right? This is what happens time and time again. And so that's the reason they won't have said anything. In fact, it makes perfect sense. We're not going to talk about what's coming out in the next patch until we are sure, until we are absolutely sure we can deliver. In fact, the best way to do that is not to say anything until we have the gold master, because I tell you that in game development, it's like that. You could have, there can be the situation we've been through, every game dev has been through this, the situation where at the end of the project, just as you're about to ship, you have to cut a feature. So if you really, really, really want in game development to never suggest or even hint at a feature, unless you are 100% certain you can deliver it then you need to wait until the day before you have that master and that master has to come weeks before the game hits the shelves generally although in this case it's an update so it can be very fast it's not like it had to get into the stores so in fact this case it would be a short time all right that's the reality of game development so when you look at that then you can understand maybe that's why they kept quiet and in fact he even said that that's why they kept quiet and why they delivered it. Now, the second thing I'll say to you is in deciding how much to put into the game, it makes strategic sense to ensure that there's a release date of the patch that is in time or the update that is in time with some point where there are a lot of sales. Every game developer would do that, like make your game for Christmas. And so it's entirely natural that that would happen. So when I look at that story, what I see is just normal game development and nothing cynical at all. But looked through the, the, your perspective on things, right? It, the way you're looking at it makes it look like it's some kind of horrible, cynical thing. And no, it isn't. They probably had a ton more features they didn't manage to get in there in that time because they have to set a time and why not set that as the time they want to release for that date oh okay I, I guess my response to you would be uh, on the two points that you've raised would be this uh, in regards to delivering a product that you promised Sean Murray and again you don't have to take my word for it later on if you have the time you can go look it up there are numerous clips of him throughout the past year before I the release of the game yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, saying the things that I'm, I'm talking about talking about features that were never in there he had a year to promote that game and a year of pre-orders, people ordering the game ahead of time, talking about it going gold before it's ever shipped. And no time up until the launch of that game did he come out and say, you know what, these aren't in here. No, I told you uh, why. No, yeah, but what I'm saying is if you're releasing <laughs> products, if I, uh, what I'm saying is if you're releasing a product and you're promising people something, then you damn well better give them a heads up and say, you know what, I couldn't deliver on this. Yeah, your, your, your product is not going to be how I promised it. We're going to offer a refund for anybody that wants to refund their pre-orders. I'm well, sorry. It's a, scary, I it's a scary thing to uh, offer the to to offer the um, uh, to do that. They may want to, have wanted to do that, but then they're going. There is the other side of it, which is that then maybe they're afraid that that they should people, be afraid if they released a product that didn't have the features they promised. Yeah. but they should still own up and treat the customer well. It, this is where you're, we come back I, to. I, this is where no, but, I agree with you, mate. I agree with you on that point. If you're in that situation, I agree with you. All right. The, and, and I'm not going to comment about the details of this particular case to say whether or not or what, whatever. In principle, I agree with you. If you promise something, you should deliver it. Yes. The, I would say that the biggest problem here was the expectations got out of hand. And we can look at that and say, well, what do we learn from it? Okay. Well, I, I'd go back to this and say, how did the expectations get out of hand? They got out of hand. People expected what they were promised. Nobody imagined features were going to be put in there. They went on what Sean Murray and the No Man's Sky Hello Games dev team told them. 
I didn't, you know, the customer didn't think, oh my god, he's going to put multiplayer in there when he never mentioned it. They didn't think, oh my god, he's going to put all these features in there. Yeah, but the announcement, but the announcement of multiplayer did happen before the game was released. But then you've got the problem of pre-orders. So I'll be honest with you and say I, I don't really like the idea of pre-orders either. I think pre-orders are bad. For this, and even for, this going, very, for this very reason, right? Because and, and I agree with you. I think pre-orders are terrible. Yeah, yeah. And I think alpha and beta testing and having people pay for that with early access is ridiculous. No, I, I get, disagree with that. Actually, I I I I, I disagree I, with that. One know, of the most success. No, no. I mean, you go too far well, on there with finish, me. Let, no, most let me finish successful. my thought. Let me finish okay, my thought, on, and then you on. can disagree. Okay, go on. I, I think there is a trend in game development and in the gaming industry as a whole, as of late to take advantage of the consumer and get as much money as possible. That goes into things like early access with alpha and beta testing, having people basically take the, the, the role of Q&A and pay you money to bug test your game rather than have you go through the code and do it yourself. You can respond, let me finish. I also think the issue with DLC these days has gone in a ridiculous direction with on the disc DLC where they chop out content and then sell it back to you when it was originally part of the game to try to increase revenue streams. I think the customer, as far as video games and software is, is concerned, have become these milkable money bags where companies think that they can take advantage of a customer and do whatever they want because what are they going to do? Who cares about their opinion? Yeah. That's that's my feeling on that. Okay. And as far as and one other, one other thing, and as far as Sean Murray is concerned, and Hello Games going back to that theme, the second point that you'd raised about releasing the update patch and they want to do it near a sales day, if he really felt bad about releasing product, hypothetically, uh, uh, you know, according to you, but if he really felt bad about releasing a product that failed to deliver on the features he promised his customers initially, then it shouldn't have been centered around a sales day. That practice should have been abandoned. He should have come out and said, you know what, we fucked up. We're going to make it right. I'm sorry oh. I didn't deliver what I promised I was going to deliver. I will do my best to make it up to you and get a patch out and have the content that we didn't deliver on. And uh, sales day be damned. Who cares about Cyber Monday? I'm going to make it up to you because I value the dollar you worked for to pay me for the product I promised. Yeah. Uh, so sort of, you know what? They released it and they haven't charged for it. So it's free additional content. So I think in their minds, they were doing that. And then as for the judgment call that you're describing, you're not on their the board, their executive board. You're not the one who's sitting there looking at the uh, cash flow situation and deciding, you know, what how to manage the risk. It's all very, it's easy to say that. Uh, but you know what? If the biggest sin in trying to fix the situation is to time the release to uh, to time the release of the update to uh, an event where there are big sales to a holiday or whatever then that's pretty small beer isn't it because the the update is free okay uh, how, and how they are the customer, securing... no no how do you think the customer feels well, when they've been waiting for three months to get the game that I they were promised know, and you... then he only releases the update when a sales day comes no, by it makes you feel see, like shit. that's the problem is that you're saying only release it's not like they had the release there in a bag and they've been waiting three months they had to he could develop... have waited two days they had and to def... pass the sale couldn't he? they they had yes but that was the time that they they aim to do it probably for financial reasons. You so can't... You're, yeah, you're, that's what I'm saying. He yeah, did but it for financial, financial reasons. reasons doesn't mean make it get, get it straight, mate. Financial reasons a lot of the time doesn't mean oh, you know, buying a new car. It means surviving. And he's not you, just surviving. Just he sold a hundred million dollars worth of his product. You, well, I don't know. I'm talking from the point of view of game development in general. I don't I'm see. I'm talking specifically about Sean Murray. He is not a struggling indie game dev. He is a multi-millionaire from this product alone. Hello Games is financially sound and in well, the black. Great. Because of well, then this take up that. Alone. But you can do it in a respectful way. And the way that you. Made Why would I be respectful to somebody who treats their customers like shit? Why would he deserve respect for taking advantage of people? What's I don't know, but if you want to know why I, I... I have no idea, but if you want to know why I responded to your tweet, which is why we're talking in the way yep. that I did, I've explained that. And that's why I yep. don't want to get dragged into... It's not about Hello Games. It's about looking at a game developer, from my perspective, doing their best and then getting treated when they do their best to that kind of abuse. I see it as abuse. Everybody okay. deals with abuse. If you look at my YouTube channel, I get called a faggot and autistic on a daily basis. Why I suck it up. Me, why did you call me autistic? 
you invited it. Go look at the tweets. You said, oh, are you, have, you asked no. me specifically, to, you, you specifically asked me to talk about autism. You said, no, oh, no, 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 no. I did that because if you I did that. Lots of a new I insult did that. Up, we talk right. About yeah, of too? course, because you know why I was saying that. Because I, I, don't I know have you, to deal. I have no idea I, why you want to know? That. I'll tell you why. Because I have to deal with abuse frequently. Okay, I've had to deal with abuse my entire life. Everybody okay. does. Well, yeah, the yeah, yeah. That's the common thing that is said. Well, like, in this case, right? Um, you actually spontaneously asked me if I had autism. Yeah, I asked you. I didn't. Yeah, call yeah. You that's autism. how it started. I, I said, "Do you have started. autism?" That's You're how autistic, it aren't you? Because you called me Hugh meme. You called yeah, me Hugh okay. meme, which I... is a really autistic insult. No, it, but do you know what that means? Yeah, I looked it up on Urban Dictionary. Where oh, no. Well, I don't know. It's a, it's a word I made up. What does it say in Urban Dictionary? <laughs> it's, it says a living meme. A li oh, well, actually, that's probably about right. That's kind of what I was thinking. But this is a philosophical thing that, that that's going on. And if you took offense at that, I apologize, okay? It's not... I didn't take offense well, at great. it. I, I mean, I, I looked at that response and I was like, this is, and I'm not insulting. I'm not saying you're autistic. Okay. I'm saying that's just something somebody with autism it's, would say. Yeah, but it's a bit weird to suddenly sort of say, are you, I mean, you know, so, okay. But look, just so you understand what, where I'm coming on with that, this human thing, it was, um, it's very simple. It's the, the fact that you've got human, human behavior. I'm alluding to that, which makes you different from a machine. If a, if a human being is just responding to memes all the time or is a meme carrier, right, they become like a machine. And what I see very often uh, these days are people that they're all the same. They all kind of like wear a uniform of, of opinion. It becomes they are more like a machine than they are a kind of a sentient being. And that's um, maybe now I've said that you'd feel offended, but what do you want? <laughs> Well, maybe I shouldn't use it, but the point I'm saying is, is that it just seemed to me that what you were doing was an automatic response. It isn't really sitting down and, 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 and thinking about it in a kind of a more in-depth way. All right. And that's that's where that comes from. But, and, and all I'm saying in response to that is uh, that that comment comes off as autistic. That's right, why that's I asked the, you. I was legitimately you, asking you because I've run into people who have autism who've said stuff like that, and so I was. I didn't know yeah, where well, you're coming from. It's not actually. It's not actually true. Uh, in, you know, well, not true. I am not, as far as I know, autistic. And I say as far as I know because, yeah, I've never been tested. So I. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. you know, I'm not an expert. I'm not a doctor, but I, as far as I can guess, I probably am not. Um, now, now, can I ask you a question as a follow-up to that? And and this is I'm being completely legitimate with you, but on Twitter, uh, you know, you'd said bring your insults, get your fanboys whipped up or riled up, something to that uh, effect, uh, and you know, be insulting. Let's see what you can do. But I noticed during your pre-stream, people were saying you're blocking them, that you're blocking them from Twitch chat. So why would you ask them to be like that and then block them for acquiescing and doing what you asked? Well, I did say before you came along what the rules of the channel of my stream are, because the thing about my stream here is that this is nothing unusual to what I do every day. I pretty much every day since the beginning of April, I've been twitching development on my game. So, you know, and what I like to is impossible right now because the chat is off the, the the flipping scale so I'm not even looking at the chat right now but we you know there's one rule which is just be respectful now you might ask why was it I was asking for that well, that's because it's a way I learned to deal with this I mean frankly you came across on Twitter you came across as being somebody who's just out to insult me left right and bloody center and in fact actually you know you kind of went for the jugular didn't you and so if you if that's what you want if I mean we could always ask why but if that's what you want to do then who am I to stop you I mean why should I try to stop you well it wasn't that you were trying to stop it or you know anything yeah, I like wasn't. that exactly. you, you, I was bringing you, it on you, yeah, yeah well, what I'm saying is you were encouraging it. I so was. Why ban people for acquiescing and doing yeah, because, as you say, because, waiting for them to get to your stream and saying, no, no, don't do that, even though I told you to on Twitter. Yeah, well, because Twitter is not my stream. Well, we weren't even supposed to technically be on your stream. You agreed no, to No, I know, on. but I didn't trust you. Not when you started arguing the toss when I was uh, I was saying, I'll get back to you at 8.30 and then we can arrange a time then. But that, well, was, be, that wasn't to, good to be, enough for you. Be, that, yeah, wasn't, that, wasn't good, that wasn't good enough for you. And not only was it not good enough for you, but yeah. you, you start tweeting all these comments, the insinuation about it, when I had every intention of, uh, you know, 
of figuring it out. But I wanted to go and spend some time because I work probably around 90 hours a week again, you know, and I, I have a couple of hours with my, uh, you know, my significant other. Uh -huh. And and I wanted to do that before, you know, carrying on with this. But that wasn't good enough for you. So at that point, I said, well, if you want to do this, you'll have to do it in my my place. Yeah, but to be, fair, trust you. To, to, to be fair, you agreed. I didn't put a gun to your head. You said, yep, I'd, li I'd like to do the Meadowcast. And then you followed no, up with... No, I didn't with... say. I said, let's do it. But no, no, then you dragged up the thing. But anyway, look. You, you directly responded what, to, whatever. if you would like uh, personal insubs, come on my Metacraft stream. I'd love to hear you defend your game. And you responded, only if you promise to have lots of insults yes, lined I up. Know. And we I, talk about autism. Okay, we can do that. Just, and, and then I just... specifically asked you for a time, yes. and you took an hour to get back to me. And then you said 8.30, whatever your time is. I, I don't well, know I don't know. Like. When you said you asked for a time, I missed the tweet. My Twitter was really full. You know, come on. And there also I had to go and have dinner. So the point here, mate, if you want to know why I switched the venue, I gave you the answer. The reason I switched the venue was because... I didn't feel that you were respecting my uh, boundaries. So if that was the case, I really as well, hell, didn't want boundaries? to come over you, to you, your place. You, you didn't. You didn't put any. Brought. You basically you asked me when do you want to do this, and when I responded, you said nothing. Yeah, when we and talked then about it, I said, "Oh my God, you really are." You know, I said I'll get back to you at eight thirty. We can pick a time then, but that wasn't good enough for you. Because if you can respond to me in a tweet and say, I'll talk to you at 8.30, you could I easily have said, I'll do the stream I at didn't this want time. to give you a time then. You wanted why, why not to, if you agreed to why do it? Not? I didn't want to give you the time right then because I didn't want to. That's respecting my boundaries. You couldn't right, respect what my I'm boundaries. Asking you is I don't understand why you're saying you don't you want do, to if do you, you agree to, to do something. Is it important for you to understand my boundaries for you? Uh, What's your, you, you, accepted the, you accepted the challenge, though. I'm here as a nicety. I, I gave in to you changing the venue and selecting I know, which was, which was good, because it wasn't going to happen otherwise. Right. So, so, okay, so what you're telling me is you lied to me when you said you'd come on Metalcast. No, you see, here you go again. You, you, you just said it wouldn't happen any other way. So when you said, I will come on, I lying. No, I said, okay, I was up for it. We negotiated when it would happen. I didn't like the way you were negotiating. And so I renegotiated. Hey, what's what's the what is there more to talk? You want to you want to drag this one out? How's yes, the, I'm I, going to I check the crowd out there. How's the crowd doing? How are you all finding this? It's like wow. You're right. I'm going to talk about this because it comes back. Okay, our whole conversation has been about how game devs treat their customers, and you're saying that as your perspective as a game dev, this is what you think. And here I am talking to a game dev who gives me his word that he's going to come on Metalcast. I just says, said, set up, yeah, sure. Wait, let, let you know what, it. mate? You know and what, mate? No. Set up no, a time, no, 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 no. He's saying he wouldn't do it, or he no, would do it, see, but only here and thing. then and this. What's fascinating about this is that the problem at the bigger scale is shown at the smaller scale as well. All right. It, what I actually said was, yeah, okay, why don't we do that? But we had to actually organize a time. We tried to organize a time, and I didn't like the way that you were organizing the time. I got new information about you. When I got that new information, I didn't feel comfortable about coming over into your venue. Now, given that that was the case with the new information that I had, I made a choice. And this is one of those situations where it's not about lying. It's about I was open to it. And then I was close to it when I got new information. Now, so, you can, okay, you no, no, can... wait, wait, wait. Well, this is really important. Wait. Yeah, it is you just important. You, you initially said that you didn't like the way I was trying to set up the time, but now you're saying it was because you got new information. So were the you lying to me then, or are you the lying to me now? The new information was the information I got in trying to negotiate a time with you. Information I got about you from that interaction about the time. I sent you three tweets asking, when are we setting this up? You never responded. I so responded, how is that me not I being responded respecting your boundaries? several times, and I said, I'll get back to you at 8.30. Come on, mate. I, I'm hey, looking look, at this, interaction on really Twitter want, right now. Do you think Anybody the audience are loving Do you think your, your fans are loving this? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's what they would do, but we could sit here all bloody day. Look, the it, point it is, is all, you want to know why stream, I switched the venue. I told you. You if want... this was my stream, we would have three to 5,000 people watching, and yes, they would be loving it. Yeah, well, maybe they would be loving it, which would be wonderful, but I didn't feel safe coming into your environment. I've told you why. Now, other than that, what you, can I do You didn't for feel you? safe? What the hell are you talking about? It's the fucking internet. What? what? What do you mean you didn't feel safe coming into my environment? What are you talking about? Well, let's just have a look at that. I'm amazed that you don't understand. Yeah, wow me. Explain it to me, because I really am curious. Uh, you, you have this huge, big channel with three, five, seven thousand people. Oh, wow. Okay, so you've got this. 
All right. It's your castle. It's your ground. It's your domain. This okay, is my yeah. humble little domain and my humble little channel where I tweet Twitch every day the development of my game. This is my place. I feel safe here. Your place, right? I have to enter that place on the basis of trust. It means to go into your place and your domain with your five to seven thousand whatevers means that I have to trust you. If I don't trust you, I'm not going to go in there. I didn't yeah, trust you, you. You talk the talk and you didn't walk the walk. You accepted. I, talk, I didn't force you to I accept. I forced the talk. I don't know who the hell you are. Maybe you think I do. I've never been to your channel. I don't know who you are. I don't yeah, know that's what right, you do. But you made the judgment basis based on an interaction on Twitter. Well, so I was, like that me, was thought called, I was bullying. That's called being open to nego open to it. And then I changed my mind when I saw the way that you're behaving. Look, I changed my mind because of the way you were the way you were negotiating with me. Right now. Sorry, but has this kind of broken your heart in some way? Has this kind of damaged your your self-esteem? I don't understand what's going on here. It's very simple. I, I, don't, I, I don't didn't like trust people you. That make promises we we come them. here. Just like I don't, I, like didn't make a I don't like people that talk the talk but don't walk the walk. I think you I'm, talked a lot I, of shit on Twitter, but then you backed out pretty quick. I didn't back out. I'm here. You're yes, you did. I came here because you refused to come on Metalcast after you agreed to it. Oh, after I agreed to it, and I've explained yes. to you why. Okay. So now, either you can you live with that. Okay, we had an interaction on Twitter where you said I was saying these mean, insulting things, and you were you were egging it on, saying, "Show me your worst, insult yeah, me the worst." Yeah, exactly. And you were you were fine with that, and you agreed to come on the cast at that point. But yeah. when I asked you what time you wanted to come on, that was the bridge too far. Well, no, it's <laughs> you asked me what time, and you nagged me what time, and I had to remind I asked you, you three I was I, I nagged three me, times. and I reminded three you times where you suddenly said, "Oh." He's gone silent on me. I wonder why. Uh, I had actually, because you did. You yeah, didn't respond for 30 because minutes. Because I was eating my dinner, and I come back, and I say, okay, look, uh, this is my routine. 8.30 usually ends. I said, okay, we'll sort out something. We'll organize something at 8.30. And you carried on. And I, I told you this. You, uh, I told you, know you no, Let's this. read through it. You can bring it up on your this screen. This is dead Perhaps boring, sure. isn't it? I mean, come on. I mean, this is no, what it, is this? Not. It's it goes like, to your, it, it goes to your character. This? It's not dead boring it at all. Bring it up. Character. Bring it up on your stream. What you can do show you know? Video. What do you know about my character thing? I, can, I know about your character based on what you present, and you presented a lie. So bring it up on your screen and show the people watching. I present if, if I'm not if I'm not telling the truth, prove me wrong. Bring it up on your screen and show it to the audience. Well, then it's just like the same thing. You know what? I had an aspiration, right? Uh, aspiration is the wrong idea. I had a plan, and yep. I thought it was a good plan. Plan is the wrong word. I had said yes in a tweet. Okay, let's do this. Okay. And then I found that, in fact, th your behavior didn't make me want to do it anymore. Now, if it's really that important to you, it's possible that we could do it another time. But it doesn't even matter at this point. It, it's my my purpose of bringing this up is would, why why would you talk all this game on Twitter and you. then say you're you're. I told yeah, but that, you. This, it sounds like such a just a, a bullshit excuse, mate. Well, what is it sounds like it sounds like excuse. bullshit. My, like, oh, I was suddenly all right. upset. Look, we can resolve it. easy to resolve this. It sounds yep. like a bullshit excuse to you. Okay. That, and that, now what? Yeah. You can that's tell the rest of the people like who follow you. you, they might agree that it sounds like a bullshit excuse to you. Well, but you have people I, you. God, ask them. I have explained to you why, and you can believe me or not believe me, and reflect on how this reflects on my character any way you like, but that is the reason why. Can we move on? Oh, okay, well, let's continue then. Uh, we talked about Sean Murray. We talked about the Meadowcast. Let's get into the bulk of it, which was my response and then our interaction after your response to the initial Hello Games tweet. The, uh, basically, the rest of our conversation on Twitter. Would you want to move into yeah, that? But, well, I mean, because there were two questions, I think, that were there. One of them was the whole thing about your tweet and my reaction, right, which I think we covered. Well, no, I'm talking about because you are a game dev, and I brought up the game that you then, just recently yeah, released. So the second thing, that, that was the first thing, and I was yep. just waiting to hear if you agreed, right? And the second thing is um, the question, it's a very good question, of how can I be proud of my game, right? Yeah. Yeah. So before I get into that, mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Okay, go ahead. Are you proud of your channel? 
Uh, no, I do it for amusement. You do it for amusement. So you're not yep. doing it for a living? No, there's no Patreon connected. There are no ads on any of my videos. I do it for what, free. What do you stand for? Nothing. Having a good time. I like having a laugh. You stand for nothing. That's right. For, I like no, wait a minute. No, you do. You stand for having a laugh. Yeah, I like to have a laugh, yeah. But I, yeah, there's no well. grand cause, if that's what you're asking, when you yeah, say, what do I say? Yeah, so stand? it's right. Okay. Okay, so that's why you, you're not particularly proud of what you do. You just sort of do it, and that's it. Well, who takes pride in shit posting? It's just shit posting in video form. Oh, so is that what it? So it really is. It's just shit posting. So you just shit post. Okay, so that's what you do. Okay, that's not what I do. Yeah, I shit post. I shit post videos. I shit post on Twitter. That's how I find amusement. Yeah. Yes, yeah, how you find amusement. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Okay, well, that's fine. If you find amusement that way, that's great. But you know, you don't even try to be proud of what you do. Well, that's fine too. If you don't want to. For me, video games is my life, right? Mm -hmm. So. Okay, I've spent my entire life doing it. I've raised, I've kept a family doing it, raised a daughter doing it. Okay. You know, I've reached 50 years, 51 years of age doing it. I'm still mm -hmm. doing it. And it's something I love to do. And it involves uh, putting yourself on the line. Okay. Where it matters. Not where it doesn't matter. Not where it's just like shit posting. Mm. It actually matters. It's hard to do. If I had to time, if I had to uh, sum up all the hours that I've spent being a game developer, it probably is, must be about thirty thousand hours by now, in my life. Well, yeah, work is hard. Nobody's going to argue with that. Yeah, it's work is hard, but this isn't like a making washing machines or cars. How do you know? Have you ever worked in a manufacturing plant? Well. You know what? When you make a video game, there is a lot that is similar to that, but it's not the same. It comes back to the thing that I was saying before, because it's also a creative thing. It's, it's where you put a piece of yourself. If you go and talk to any indie game developer um, that are doing it, well, there are two kinds of indie game developers. They're the ones who, who are doing it because they want to... Uh, where the, well, it's difficult to explain, really, but I, you, could, you can make video games as a job, and you can make video games as something more than a job. It's like if you ask somebody who writes books, for example, if you ask an author, a writer, uh -huh. why they write books, they're not going to tell you that they write books for the money, right? They write books because they put a piece of themselves into it. And that, in indie game development especially, that's what you do. But regardless of, you know, how it is for anybody else, for me, it really is exactly that. Because I started when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And I have, you know, <laughs> put my entire life and soul into it. And I've made games. I've always been an indie game developer. I was an indie game developer before indie games was a term. Okay. First game I released commercially was 1980. Right? Yeah, I, I looked up your um, your background. You released a, a good amount of games, like Mega Drive. And, uh, was it Amiga? It was on the Amiga. It was Kickoff, right? Yeah, Which, and then it got ported, yeah. Well, Kickoff, and it was Kickoff to Some of the people who kind of like, I think it was some, somebody who was following you, he was tweeting, he was saying, Oh, uh, well, you know, I don't know how anybody, I think anybody who decides to make a soccer game is like, you know, that's the, that's the end of their career or whatever. And, well, actually, over here in Europe, that might be the perspective of someone over in the US, but, you know, I'm from Europe, right? So in Europe, well, you know, actually, the big news is that the most popular sport in the world is soccer. So really, I don't know how this, this, this is supposed to pan out, but... Anyway, no, I, I know you guys over the uh, shit like FIFA and all that stuff. I know it's a big European thing. It's Games actually, sell really well. It's all over the world. South America, Australia, everywhere. The only place. Well, when I said uh, uh, over there, I meant not America. Yeah, not I, America. I look at it as like America and then not America, which There's, just... Yeah, exactly. Funny. I mean, the only country where soccer is not an absolutely... is part. Actually, it's more... It, 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 in the same way as some sports are the life and blood of your country, right? Soccer is the football as we call it is the life and blood of cultures all over the world it's the single most important most popular sport in the world but i 
I uh, made a game for that uh, in my early 20s, and it was the most successful game uh, for a while. Right? It was the most successful so football game for a start for about two years. But no, no, it yeah, won, I saw and it, it won, it, it, won so well. it won major awards and so on. So you know, it's like okay. So the reason, only reason I mention that is because it's like, well, you, I wouldn't be able to do what I have done for so long if I didn't take pride in my work. And this comes back to some of the things that you know about the way that devs get treated sometimes, okay, by certain groups and so on. It's that they're ten, it, you can take the point of view. What what certain groups though? So come on. on, you know there is. No, I'm the asking moment, you because I don't know what you yes, mean. Yes, you do know what I mean. No, I don't. I'm asking you to explain. Maybe somebody yeah, in the audience well, doesn't. Well, what? Well, okay. All right. Well, there is a toxicity that has developed in among gamers. Okay. All right. It is actually it feels somewhat fascist in the way it's working. It's tied into things like GamerGate. It's tied in to the, this SJW thing, which annoys the hell out of me. The, the, just the way that you can take three words which are positive and try to turn them into a negative. But basically, what, what you've got is uh -huh. a thing where if you are someone like me, right, who makes games because they want to make the game they want to make, that's the way, thing I always have done and what I did with the successful games of the past. Yeah. And what I have done after... 20 more than 20, 20 about 25 years of not being able to make indie games anymore because people might not realize that indie game development kind of died out and started to come back about eight years uh, about eight years ago right um is that if you are doing that you want to make the kind of game that you want to make it's very very difficult to get the courage to do that if you've got a bunch of people in the audience who are going to throw stuff at you, right? And that exists. That's so when you say fascist, how do you mean fascist? How are, how are gamers reacting in a fascist you know, I'm manner? I'm not saying gamers. That's misleading. That's not what I said. I'm not saying gamers are reacting in a fascist way. I mean, if you, that's not what I'm saying at all, right? So you're saying these are non-gamers that are acting like this? No, that's not what I said either. No, I'm asking you, okay. It's what, a percentage. It's a small minority, actually. It's a minority. A minority of what? Of gamers. A minority okay, so of gamers. you're, you're, you're you saying say, gamers are acting like, how are they acting fascist? Well, because through their actions, they're trying to dictate what kind of games can be made and what kind of games can't be made and how they should be made and when a game is declared finished or not finished. Uh, how are they doing that? I mean, give me an example in relation oh, to like, your you, product. I'm not going to go. I'm, I'm, going I'm asking you, you to, do you see it or you don't. I mean, if I can't, it's I'm not, asking you to explain it to me. So in relation to your game, how are they acting in a fascist manner towards you? With I'm the not talking game about my game. game. I'm not going well, to they, talk they, about my okay, game. Okay, well, okay, pick one then and give me an example of how they're being fascist and dictating I'm not going things. to talk about my game because that would just be uh, No, that, that's ridiculous. fine. Pick another, pick another game and then, then give me an example of how they're being fascist. Okay, well, let's say somebody wants to release a game that is uh well you, we could say no man's sky in some way but okay but then you have this other point which there are two points with no man's sky one of them is the one that you've already addressed or talked about the other one is about the question about whether no man's sky is a game or not so oh, okay. Okay. there are certain That's... games like walking simulators or whatever right you know that games which are not treating the medium in exactly the way that we are necessarily used to so outliers and they will get abuse now here's the thing is that it doesn't matter if about people not liking the game okay even my game if people don't like my game that's fine right there's a lot of misconceptions about my relationship between me and, and people out there i've been accused of blocking people who don't like the game that's not true i block people who insult me there's a big diff. There's a huge flipping difference. That that's that's fine. But yeah. I, in relation to this, okay, so you bring up walking simulators. So how do you know that the people that are reacting to that uh, with vitriol, uh, with, uh, saying mean things, let's say, how do you know those aren't just gamers that fucking hate walking simulators and think it ruins the hobby or ruins the well, that's uh, the problem, the genre. Right? Well, okay, so it's like if they don't like them, fine. If they don't like them and they're hurling abuse at the game developer, not fine. If they don't like them and they go on some kind of warpath as if that type of game is a threat to to games 
that's not right either. And that is a form of fascism, isn't it? Hey, how, you is, can't so have how, is, giving, how is giving your opinion on something fascist? Ah, wait a minute. There's a big difference between just giving an opinion and intimidating and uh, attacking people. Let's take Phil Fish. Huh? How about Phil Fish? Yeah, let's talk about Phil uh, Fish. Talk, talk about Phil Fish. Nobody likes to talk sure. about Phil Fish. Well, I'll talk about I Phil Fish I love to all talk day. about him. Yeah, Go I'm ahead. sure you do. What do you think about Phil Fish then? I think Phil Fish uh, is up his own ass. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. You know, I mean, come on. The first oh, thing you, that you, you can say, any, the first thing that you can say is an insult. I yeah, was so like hoping fish, you'd come out with something right. a little bit more classy you, than You asked insult. me what I think of Phil Fish. Not All what right. Well, you could him have as an individual, and you, I gave you a real assessment of what I think. It's true. There was an ambiguity there, but it would have been really nice if you talked about the story. About but that's not, you didn't ask on. me about the story of his product. You I asked said, me about what do you man. think of Phil Fish? Yeah, Phil Fish. That's not the name it's of It's true. Show. Okay, I accept that. Let me rephrase the question. What do you think of the story of Phil Fish? <laughs> it's, a, it's kind of a bizarre... What do you mean, like, the story, like, the recent events in the news? Or what do you mean, like, him as an indie game dev? Or what exactly? Well, what what story happened to Phil Fish? Well, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to get to. Because we can talk about Phil Fish the person. And we could talk That's about the story about. Yeah. of Phil Fish. Like, well, okay, but well, why, give me a run out did, of the event look, then. Okay, you, go, you, you, uh, you, where did Phil Fish go wrong? Tell me. I think that he let his ego get the best of him and became adversarial with his consumer base. And that led to him imploding on Twitter and saying he wasn't going to do a sequel to a game and antagonizing people that were potential customers. And basically, that was bad business. That's what I right. think of Phil yeah, Fish. But actually, what happened, as I understand it, because everybody has their own understanding, and that's one of the things, isn't it? Which is probably terribly boring to some people. But there are multiple perspectives, and so it's never just that easy. I mean, it's quite easy just to sort of rail on a person and say, <laughs> about them, right? Or, or me, as you did. Uh, you know, you go and look at some statistics out there. Well, of course, I understand now you do it because it's a game. Well, OK, it was a game. Very good. I mean, we have to question whether the game is actually helping anything or not. I don't know. But, um, you know, you, 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 you basically uh, reduce me down to a set of to a Metacritic score. You know, um, it's very easy to do that. I mean, you can just say that about Phil Fish. But there's a really interesting story behind it. And in fact, the uh, actual uh, problem. Phil Fish or yeah, yeah, what are we talking about? The problem was Marcus Beer. Oh, okay. Give me your rundown of the Phil Fish story then. Oh, as you don't know? Do you don't know about Marcus Beer? No, I'm asking you to give me your. You want to tell me this, so I'm asking you. Yeah, I'm just wondering if you know. Go ahead and give me your rundown of what you think Marcus Beer, how that relates to Phil Fish's know, attitude. Do you know? I, I want to know what you know about it. Do you know about Marcus Beer? Who Marcus Beer I, is? I, I, I'm a complete virgin. I don't know anybody but Phil Fish in the world. I've never heard of anyone else. I, I consider me tabula rasa, buddy. Oh so my God! Explain, that's explain, that's, explain, that's explain, disappointing. I, I'm actually Phil curious Fish if you know who Marcus Beer Marcus is. Beer. But Marcus Beer is a, a journalist or commentator, and he did a video in okay. a video recording for some site or whatever, absolutely railed upon the guy, insulted him in the most mm -hmm. vile way, apparently, and not just him, but another guy whose name I forget. Um, and a apparently, um, the reason why was because he wouldn't express an opinion about some Microsoft deal with indie devs. Okay. And it, it, right? And that is what sparked it off. And so frankly, if people, I was, if I was, you think people dislike Phil Fish because of their, uh, they were colored by that article or by Marcus Beer's opinion. You don't think they're turned off by him or they dislike I'm, him as an individual sure based on his something, actions. I'm sure that there was something, there was other stuff brewing. But if you're looking at the tipping point, that's what it well, was. Well, give me a percentage point of I all don't the people know. that dislike Phil me. Fish. You how many me. dislike him based on the, him? You have the figures. I, uh, generally, I don't. I can tell you that that's my understanding of where it went wrong. So what you're describing in the story about where. It sort of spiraled out of control, and in the end, he cancelled uh, Fez 2. Actually, that happened. It, it wasn't he doxed. It wasn't his service service hacked. So it actually went beyond even just words and, and actually. Well, uh, became... how, how could he be doxed? Everybody knows his name is Phil Fish. That's was that was his Twitter handle. He identified himself. Oh, you know what? Well, maybe I'm using the word doxed wrong. What do you understand the meaning of the word doxed? Are you getting at the financial documents that were released in relation to his company and the payroll? He, one way, he, his company uh, sensitive data was compromised, is my understanding of it. All right. And yeah. So anyway, the point is, is that he was attacked until he couldn't 
take it anymore and he quit so in fact actually you know you can look at this in various ways and you could say okay well you know phil fish if someone might say that phil fish I would never say it, so I'm having trouble even suggesting somebody else saying it. But they might blame someone might blame Phil Fish. I don't think that's justified. But um, the point is, is that intimidation caused Phil Fish to quit. Oh, okay, you honest. Oh, Phil Fish was adversarial even from the initial no, release. Of, it doesn't matter. Wait, uh, no, what, uh, no, it's because the adversary. You're adversarial. So what the hell? Are you going to let me finish, or are you going to just interrupt? Well, if you're going to tell me, you tell me he's. You're not even letting. You're not even letting me answer. Because I want to know if you if you consider a problem. If you want to know, let me finish my answer. Okay, go on. Phil Fish was adversarial with his consumer base well before Fez 2, well before the financial incident that you're talking about. I don't know when the placement of Marcus Beer or his article comes into play, but it, it, he was known to have problems with people he was known to be up his own ass he insulted other devs he he was full of himself based off the initial success of his game and the initial interest of his game a man with that like that with that kind of an ego is a very fragile individual he couldn't take the banter well, no I'm, that's I'm not, a story I'm not and i'm not going to argue with it but what well, i am I'm, going to I'm say not, is... i'm not discounting what you're saying either no, but i'm good. saying that phil fish has a history of behavior that's well documented but that's not my point you know it's like you know he's a guy who's young doesn't know how to handle or didn't know how to handle the attention well excuse me you know he sure know how to handle the attention when he was bragging about how great he was yeah but he doesn't because he's just a young guy who ended up getting success at making a video game so phil fish didn't do nothing right i mean he's just this innocent guy that uh, you know couldn't no, couldn't handle the no, attention i'm telling you i'm telling you that it's fracking difficult to deal with success so maybe maybe it's time that people kind of understand that and react to the way people are with a little bit of compassion, okay? And Phil Fish was whether or not, to people. Why would I be compassionate towards that? I'm not asking you to be compassionate towards me. Uh, you said I was an asshole to you. I don't expect yeah, you to treat I think me with we should all, I think we should all be compassionate towards everybody if we can. It's, it's important. Well, I, I think the world should hold hands and sing kumbaya. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. There are realities No, to it's deal. not going to happen as long as people are going around, you know, uh, being angry and, uh, you know, disrespectful and, and full of prejudice all the time. So and, reducing think, people down, to the original... and reducing people down to a Metacritic score, right? Okay, but to bring it back to the original point, because uh, we kind of got here from the fascism discussion, you think that people being mean to Phil Fish or saying mean things to him is somehow related to fascism? Well, I think there's an argument for that, isn't there? I mean, isn't it a case that if somebody... It sounds like a bad argument, well, but go, give it to me. Yeah, it's opinion, you know. Yeah, Obviously, I'm it. going around a particular issue, either accept it, you don't, I don't know. But if we're having a chat, then they were trying to... I mean, what's the point of us talking? Isn't it just to sort of exchange points of view and perspective? I don't know that everything I say is going to be perfect, but I can well, tell I, you... I think it's a bad argument, it, but I'm willing to hear it. You know, but the point I'm making here is that, look, what do I want to see? I mean, we can just boil it down to that. What do I want to see? I want to see a world in which anybody wants to make the game type of games that they want to make can do so without fear of intimidation. Okay, what what do you consider intimidation? Is me rating your game badly on Metacritic intimidation? No, that's just a review, isn't it? But I can tell in intimidation is then, uh, well, what was what you were doing? Wasn't that in to me? Wasn't that intimidation? Did you not give it back just as good as I gave it? Yeah, but that's did the you reason not, did you, I did, did in my own way. It, but, but you, I mean, you, you want to know it, why? Yes. You want to know why I reacted in that way? I, it's a very simple explanation. I wanted to have a defence for your intimidation, right? But I didn't want to dish back the same thing that you were dishing to me. So therefore, the best uh, way of doing that was to invite you more because maybe I want to make you happy. I mean, if it really makes you happy to do this. I mean, would you like to just throw so some So then how is it intimidation out? if you encourage it and invite it? Well, because then it doesn't become intimidation anymore, doesn't it? Then it means I have control. Because so that at the end then, of the then day... it's not intimidation. That in the end of the day is what it's about. When you're intimidating someone, you're trying to exert control upon them. So it's a trick. It's like Tai Chi. It's like, okay, I'll invite it now. I mean, because of course you've made a comment about me being English and perhaps having an ugly face. And I know you like so. I because mean, you said I hate also, myself when I look in the mirror. I know right? I did that's, say that's that. That was yeah. that was that was a bit strong. And if you if it hurt your feelings, I apologise. Oh, no, no, I, I felt intimidated. You, you felt intimidated by. I that. think it was fascist of you. Yeah. Well. 
right? Mm, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I have to think about that one. I'm open to admitting mistakes if I make mistakes. So I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I'm not ready to give you an answer. I know that what I was trying to say by that was, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to say what you were saying really I looked at it and thought, what is this the way you want? Is this what you stand for? I go, it comes back to that. But now, you know what? Now I know that you don't stand for anything. Then it's all a joke. So, yeah, like I said, I, I do my stuff online for amusement. Yeah. So, so, well, then if it's all a joke, then I know to react that way. But I would agree with you that that particular comment is perhaps a little strong. Yeah. But you know okay. what? Yeah. You know what? It doesn't matter. It's how you feel about it. So you honestly tell me how you feel about it. If you honestly felt intimidated by it, then I apologize. Okay. Well, was it your intention then when you said that comment to be fascist? No, I wasn't being fascist. Well, you said intimidation is like fascist. I mean, this it is the conversation the we're coming on. My intention was not to intimidate you. My so intention... then when people are, are shit-talking Phil Fish, if it's how do you know it's their intention then to intimidate and be fascist rather than talk shit to them? Well, exactly. It comes back to what we said at the beginning. What I said at the beginning, it all depends on trust. How do you know whether someone's... How do you, is, it always, so you... is it always... Uh, is it ever wrong to tell tell a lie? You know, at the end of the well, day. Well, going back to your and point, we make then, mistakes. you want trust for game developers, but not for consumers. You're willing to say we should trust game developers when they fuck up, but when a consumer is a dick to a game dev, we need to assume that's fascist. No, we need to trust. The trust needs to go both ways, mate. Don't try to. So th then, words. why would you even say that there's a segment that acts fascist when you yourself said, "No, I need well, to trust." Because there are intention. from the actions that they take, you can see. Just like I said, from the actions and behaviors of Sean Murray right that uh what i see is a person who's a con artist lying to people but you said no i need to have trust so i'm turning this back around on you and asking you in that same vein if you want me to trust him that he has good intentions yeah, why well, are you saying these people gets are trust can get broken in many ways right it's simple trust can get broken in many ways but we need to try and build trust so here's one of the ways to build trust if i've said something that's uh, upset you and i say i can say okay and i get your perspective and i could go oh okay and then I say, I say sorry, and that's fine. And then I try no, to avoid that again. I'm not perfect. It's not like I, I, I don't go through my life 100% yeah, avoiding... I'm not, I'm not raising it because I want you to apologize or even because I felt it was intimidation. My point you said, when it, I you that, said you did, but anyway. Yeah, because I'm trying to highlight a point. It's ridiculous. You know you weren't trying to intimidate me. We were back and forth on Twitter. That's just how people interact. No, it isn't. That's the point. Is that it yes, matters. Yes, it it matters. You can't just... Because there's a whole bunch of people out there who think it doesn't matter, that it's okay. You can say whatever you like. You can accuse people of anything. If you, can if you don't like them. what somebody has to say on the internet, you can block them, you can mute them, you can ignore them, you can walk away, you can talk to somebody else. There's nothing keeping you from having that conversation. You yeah. can't say... I am intimidated by this person saying this. But if you're a game you can developer, hit a button and make them go away. That's an, il that's an illusion. If you're a game developer these days, you have to interact with the internet. You have to work on building uh, a relationship with your audience, and that is what you know gets damaged when you've got a bunch of people in the audience shouting down what the game developer is trying to do. And then there are other activities as well, such as review bombing. And so, you know, what I call for is just this thing of don't just every time a game developer releases a game and it's not the kind of game you like or you think it's a kind of threat to the existence of video games or it's whatever, is by all means criticize the game always treat the game developer with respect and it's in your interest to do it because if you don't then people will feel too intimidated to make video See, games and this this is what i feel is so bizarre uh, from at least in relation to video game software development i can think of no other profession where this line of thought is accepted if i go into a restaurant no no really if i go into a restaurant order a meal if i order a steak and they bring me a shitty hamburger and I go leave a Yelp review score. I don't hear the chef coming out and saying, well, you shouldn't have said I was a shit chef that didn't listen to your order. You need to respect me and and have trust in me. But I put money down. I, this isn't art. There this is, is a business. Difference. There is a difference between you giving a review of a game and intimidating 
the game developer. Activities uh, that are going on out there right now are intimidating game developers. And when I asked you for an example, you couldn't really I give me one. I did give you an example. I gave you an example of Phil Fish. Is that not good enough? You? I gave the example of Hello Games. Well, Is that not good enough? Him? Come on. Either, it, look, mate, if you can't accept that, if you don't see that, then I am not equipped at this time to present you with the evidence that would convince you. I don't think I can, okay? Right? But well, then you, answer my question. What other profession to, would this line of thought be acceptable? Yeah, okay, that's an interesting, can. that is an interesting question. And it okay. comes back to the thing that you keep saying. This profession is different because you're expecting people to create a product that moves you emotionally. So like movies or a book? Yeah, well, anything that's creative in that way. Right. Right, but unlike a book, a book has no technical constraints on it. A movie has technical constraints, but fewer. Okay. Well, video, you games, video games are hard to make. They are different because you have to mesh together, right, that creative design with technology, with a budget, with production, to a deadline. Okay. okay, well, any piece and of hardware could be that. I mean, if I'm, if I'm making a microprocessor, if I'm building making a car, a micro that's integration of design. You're making of, a microprocessor, of, of it's there to function, but a video game is there to entertain. And so I put it to you, I could make a video game that was delivered on time, delivers all the features that were promised, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, does everything that it was meant to do, okay? And then it's still, people don't like it. So, because it's a bad game. That's yeah, yeah. The so how? So how is it? How does that come? How does it become? How do you make a game a good game or a bad game? You can measure. Well, how, how do you release a car that you know it drives? Well, it's safe, you measure. It's functional. It has you good measure. gas for mileage. Uh, but people yeah, don't yeah, like yeah, the measure. design or how the color. You, they don't like the way it looks. Absolutely. You measure. You measure. 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 How do you measure how fun a game is? Come on. That's the point. Is is the same question as saying how do you measure how beautiful a painting is, or how do you measure well, how do you I, measure I how great like, a book is? Where like is this. it? Where is how the where are the that? metrics for a book? I would put it to you like this: before you can even get to judging a game on its fun factor, and I know you're going to say that's subjective, but before you can even get to that, what do you need? You need it to be functional. You need it to be. Uh, you need the mechanics to work, the graphics to work. You need a lot of sure. things in place certain, you can get into. Yeah, that's right. There are certain things that you need, absolutely. Right. But they, and, are, not, uh, but they yeah. are the easy bits. If they're so easy, why do game devs keep fucking up the easy bits? Because it keeps interfering with the fracking game design. Come on, that's what I'm trying to tell you. They have so to you're work telling together. me that you sit down to develop a game and think, I want this to be artistic and emotional, and uh, I'll think of the mechanics and the functionality later? That's ridiculous. If you ridiculous. want me to teach you how video games are made, and I use the word teach because it's something you would have to actually put more effort into than a conversation can describe, okay? And you could believe me or not believe me. Well, right? I'm trying to understand how right. you think I this, try and this craft or this trade understand. is somehow exempt from everything it's else that's ever existed. It's not exempt, it's different, and I'm trying to explain why, and this I really would put some effort into because I think this is part of the real crux of the matter. You, you how can you have respect for game developers if you don't know what the frack they're doing? How, how can, can I have respect trust? for any craftsman if I don't know what they're doing? I don't know how a fucking toaster is made. I'm not in the assembly plant at a car yeah, manufacturer, but, toasters, but, but toasters, I judge it based on the final product yes, and its toasters, functionality and its value for money. But toasters, in the end, they cost a certain money, amount of money, and then do they toast your bread or not? And it's pretty much ends Does up this there. game play or not? Seems what like does a very it mean to game? Stand. When is the game finished? How long should the game be? Is a game that lasts five minutes a, a, a full game, game? A game that lasts five minutes? For, for how long? For how long? How for how long? How long should the game be? Let's 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 a hypothetical example of a game. How long should the game be? You tell me. How how long? How what, how many hours of gameplay game should be, it have? A game could be uh, between one hour and a thousand hours. That that isn't my well, argument no, here. My going argument to, is going before to start... you get into the no, fun wait a judgment, ah, you need it to be functional. I'm don't trying you? to explain. So either you're open to it or not. I, I'm listening, but I'm not hearing much. No, I know, but you really need to therefore listen, because I know I'm trying to be sarky about that. I'm just saying, just try, because I think you tend to be very literal. And the problem is, is if you're trying to describe something that's difficult to describe in words, all right, which is, there are many things that are like that, then you really have to concentrate on trying to read between the oh, lines. Okay, I, I will listen to you, but I want to at least say this before you start, and then I'll be silent and let you say what you have to say. But 
you know, this, this, it's different and it's hard. All work is hard. All right. I, I know you may not think that. You may think you have a tougher job than other people, but that's a really. Yes, but that's. that's that, no, let me finish. That's, that's just bullshit. Nobody likes work. It's always difficult. Some people have a passion for the work that they do. Some people don't. But at the end of the day, work is work. Okay. Do you want and video my, my, games to exist? I enjoy it as a hobby, yeah. You want them to continue to exist and to grow as a medium? I, I don't know what grow as a medium means. It but means I like they grow. Games. It means that they get more interesting. They become, how does grow mean? It means that they, they go to places. From a technical they, standpoint, like they, more pixels per screen? Like they, what are we talking about? They entertain you in, way, in new ways. Is that what you want? It, well, I, I, I'm trying to imagine how they'd entertain me in new ways, but yeah. That That's sounds the job good. of the designers to figure that out. Oh, fantastic. Right, yeah, so is that what yeah. you want? All right, then sure. if that is what you want, then you have to realize that unless you produce the same game that's been exactly produced before, the first step you take down that road is like the step into the off, off a cliff. You don't know what's going to happen. Okay? okay. And this is where it's very, very different because it's research and development pretty much all the way. Unless you make exactly the same game as has been made before, there's always uncertainties. And what you're looking for is some kind of magic mix. What you're looking for is a game that entertains, that grabs, that people play and they don't want to put down, that people feel satisfied with. There is no formula for it. It's not like making a toaster or a washing machine. That spark of creativity is the component that a game needs to have. And it's held in place with a technological framework that is rigid. And it's hard as hell to make the two things work together. So if you want to understand why video games are difficult to make, it's because of that. You've got the fluffiness. I, I, I disagree with you your disagree point. You disagree with it, but then, you know, okay, disagree. No, with your point that other industries don't grow. You don't think cars have evolved? You don't think new features yes, have been implemented? Grow, better engines have been entered? You don't think they walked off a cliff when they thought, I'm going to implement this new design feature and hope yeah, that people like it's it? it's different because it's... You're talking about the difference between creating a product and creating an experience. Come on. With you can't, video games, you can't you sell off. Experiences. You can't sell off lies and failure as it's an experience. It's forgivable. That's it's bullshit. It's not a question of selling off lies. It's a question of are you making? Are you, you giving, wanting to know the difference? Come on, you're being really stubborn. You want to know the difference between I'm being making a car I'm sick and making of being a game. Taken advantage of by game developers that think they can just use bullshit. I'm not saying you're doing this, but I'm sick of game developers yeah, using okay, these. Okay, but you're changing the subject. What the moment we're talking about? What's the difference between um, a car and a game? Right. Yeah, well, you're trying to make it seem like this is some, like, oh, nobody else experiences new design I didn't technique. say that. No. Come on, that's basic Yes, you did. You said it's different because crap. you're throwing yourself off a cliff. You don't know. You need to basic, start from Basic crap. Straw man crap there. Come on. Come on. You, you, you could do better than that. I'm not it's saying that because... You don't like the argument that's, that's straw man bullshit. You People don't... innovate all the time. Don't act like game development is in some kind of crux because they're the only ones that have to do new shit. No, Every that's not what I said. Either you thing. want to understand the difference or you don't. It sounds to me that you don't, and there is the problem. That's why we have a problem between certain elements of the audience and game developers, because there's a lack of communication. I could just take oh, a step okay. back so here and say, okay, new I, it's my you fault. Off a cliff that, for, hang on. And, and it's not the game that you wanted to make. So do you stop at that point? Let's say you're right about everything, that you made this new innovative experience, you took this huge risk, and you're going to release it, and you know your game is shit. Should you release it? Sorry, could you say that again? Because I, I, okay, let's say that you're right. Let's say that uh, game development, uh, software development, and, and this one particular genre is unique. That it has its own special difficulties not in any other industry, or that are at least slightly different or more burdensome. Or burdensome it's probably, than other it's, industries. Can I clarify that? It's just that it does exist in other industries too, but it is particularly this clash is particularly difficult in video games. It, it really fair, fair identifies, enough. it identifies the process. Oh, okay. That, and you either believe enough. me or don't. If you don't believe me, we're done. Because I mean, that, I've been that, making games that's... 40 fracking years. I know this to be true, right? Okay. That, I would love enough. to be able I, I'm to saying, let's you. assume you're right. Okay. So you, you go through this process of making a game, you pour your heart into it, you put all this investment in it. And then when the day comes to ship the thing, you know it's crap. It has bugs, it has glitches, it is a pile of shit. And you as the developer know that. Do you release the product? Yeah, that's a big question, isn't it? Do you release the product? Well, most of the time, most business. of the time, the game. If you me answer, most of the time, the game is canned before that happens. Okay, but let me tell you another thing that works. 
that's a story. No game is created in isolation. There is always the publisher or the people who finance the game or Sony, the console holder. The people making the game, they're not making it in isolation. People see the game and they say, this game is really cool. I can tell yeah, you I'm asking that as you then, then you release the game and you think, well, it's been getting really good reception from everybody. And then it hits the market and then you find something different happens. This is a known thing. This happens. The point here being is that everybody was doing their best and thought they were delivering something good and it hits the market and then the market doesn't like it. And then at oh, that okay. point, it gets difficult, doesn't it? Because you could turn around to say, well, should they have released at that time or should they have released it later or should they have this or was it finished or early access or this, blah, blah, blah. And that's when I say about trust, because although the scenario that you describe, that cynical thing that you talk about, does exist in the industry and has, often at the expense of developers themselves, Ma vast majority of developers wouldn't ship something that was crap. Really? That's right. They wouldn't want to. Really? You don't think they would ship something they knew had bugs, that they knew had would problems? You? Because we have pride in our work. I'm not saying it never happens. How many day one patches have you seen recently? I mean, come on, be honest with me. You don't yeah, think they ship off buggy products? Let's talk about day one product, day one patches. Okay, day one patches ahead. come from the pressures that are put in the... It's a problem with the process. It's not a problem with the developers. It's a problem with the process. Are the developers a part of the process? Yeah, they're, they're part of the process, but it's a problem with the process. I mean, it's like... I, I didn't say that they, the developers are exempt from it. I said it's a problem with the process. Come on. It's the pro means that the process needs to be fixed. And part of that process, we come all the way back to the fact that when a game is being developed, you want to generate hype, but you'd kind of need to. And you generate that hype by saying what you aspire to have in the game and you make the game and then you find that you have to pull features out for the reasons that I've talked about. Because you're not making a car, you're not making a washing machine, you're not making a toaster, you're making an entertainment product, the most complicated form of entertainment product that exists. There's nothing else that comes near it in terms of complexity and you have to make tough calls and then what happens is you have the pressure to ship by a certain date because there's a budget, the budget is running out, you have to pay for people, they have to earn a living. So you have to make a call, you make a call to ship the game and you're going to patch it. If it's um, actually uh, shipped in the shops, there's an additional problem which you might not be aware of, that you have to get, to get the game in the shops, you have to deliver it four weeks ahead. So you then end up in a situation you say, well, damn it, we need to get the thing out into the, and we promised all this stuff, and now we, what are we going to do? We're going to ship it four weeks ahead. We're going to make sure it hits the shops, and we've got four weeks to do the first day patch, and then they are, they're doing that, and they get the first day patch, reality of video games. You want to fix it, you just get rid of the expectations. So that means that you don't promise anything. And that is where we're going. That's what the future brings because there isn't an appreciation of the process. What you will lose in the end is that people will not say anything about their games. There will be no early reviews, no previews, nothing. You just, one day, the game is ready, and up they come and they say, here's our game. And maybe, so this, that, maybe, that, wouldn't like, be, maybe that wouldn't be a bad thing. This sounds like bad business practices. So you know this process exists. You know that this can affect the customer. You know they can get screwed over, but you don't say anything. Why? Because it's business? One second. Yep. Take your time. It's a publisher. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry, you have to ask that question again. Yep, that's fine. Uh, so what I'm saying is it sounds like bad business practices. If developers are a part of this process, if they're aware of this process, if they know that it can affect adversely the consumer by not getting the product they were promised at the shipment date when they go to the store to buy it, why, why are devs defending it? Why aren't they uh, opening up and saying, you know what, I don't want to be associated with bad business practices. You I value what? the consumer's dollar more. You know what? First of all, stop treating the developers like they have it cushy. I'm asking a simple, straightforward no, question. I know. I'm they, you said they're, you said they're I'm part of the process. Please, I'm answering it. I, okay, no, 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 no. Let, all right, let me, let me explain why. Let me explain why I said that. 
from what you were saying, you making it sound like the devs are in control. No, I'm asking why they don't say something if they know this is a bad business practice. Do you and guys they, not give a shit about the customers? Do you know that they don't say that? So, okay. what do you? Who have you talked to? Have you ever talked to a game developer <laughs> like this <laughs> before? Has Sean Murray ever come out and said we fucked up? The process was wrong. I don't and you're think Sean this Murray crazy. really wants to say anything because right why now not? anything he says is going to get ripped apart no matter what he does. Why, My question why not? for you you're is: You're saying he's a dev, a part of the process. This is he's a not going to say it now. But I'm no, quite why did sure he say it right away? that perhaps why did he say in the future, day? perhaps in the future, well, like I said, maybe they when they released the game, they thought it would be all right. I've already been through that. Have you spoken to a game developer before? Are, are you guys, okay, so you're held captive, you can't speak out and say, this is wrong, the, the company's pushing us to release the yes. game, we shouldn't? Sometimes that's well, the Okay, case. lick me to somebody who's done that. Let, can you answer my question? Have you had this conversation with a game dev before? Yes, I've actually talked to game devs before. Yes, I have. Uh, am I saying anything you haven't heard before? I've heard a lot about the process. I've heard a lot about how difficult they find it to be. I've heard a lot about deadlines and budget constraints. Yeah, so but you're fine. You're hearing it again. You're hearing it again, but, aren't you? But a lot of the people I've talked to have some sort of some form of fucking integrity and they wouldn't be a part of a process that hurts the consumer because you're yeah. asking this you keep talking about trust this isn't a sleepover we're not girlfriends giggling at a yeah. movie okay i'm now, paying you money for a product yes exactly now the point here is right that if you've heard that from other game devs you will know that what i'm saying no i've heard is, about the difficulties right, but not the excuse making of right. why this is acceptable practice but who's making the excuses you, you just said that they're part of a process. They know they're shipping a game that can't live up to the hype in some yeah, cases. You've heard, other game, you've heard other ga uh, the game devs talking about the process. And then you count on to insinuate that I don't have any integrity or something. Or did I, I misread said, you? I, I said they have integrity. We're talking about hypothetical game devs that yeah, know the so process you hear, is broken. Yeah, that know the process other game is devs broken and go along and with they, it. Yeah, so this is what you do, right? What you do, if you're wise, is that you don't promise what you can't deliver all right and if you followed what i have been saying about my own game you will know that i've applied this because i passionately believe in that so when people have asked me back in whenever it was uh, e egx and they <coughs> was interviewed there and they said well will you be able to play it online well you know online play of my game pretty damn fracking important feature right and i still didn't commit to it because I wasn't 100% sure we could do it. I was 99% sure we could do it. And I still said, well, it's looking promising, but because that's, I know from experience, that is the case. Okay. Now I can do that because I'm an I really am very independent and there's been no interference um, from the creative side, but that doesn't mean that I haven't also had a problem with deadlines because there was a deal that required uh, meeting a certain deadline that's a reality that you get by the way you get a contract you make a promise you have to deliver the game by that deadline these these are realities these are the problems of game development and that's why i say it's process and you have to figure out a good process and it's oh, okay actually so looking very, at it's this... actually very hard and you can do your best but just think about this for a minute. It's possible to make a mistake. So you line up your process and early on you say something and you realize later it was a mistake to say or do a certain thing. And then you have to live with the consequences of it. So that's different though from being like, you know, dishonest. That's actually making a mistake. Uh, and I understand people make mistakes. I know nobody's infallible. But they're, they're, they're just gaming as a whole, we've, we've seen repeatedly instances of games being shipped that were buggy or broken. We've yes. seen on this DLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. We've Agreed. seen early access stuff. We've Agreed. seen a lot of lives. Agreed. So when, you, when you're talking about uh, as a consumer, you know, I'm, that's what I'm speaking as. Yeah. Why should I trust you? I'm, I'm not, this is, again, this isn't a friendship. I, I'm buying a product okay. from you. But why should you vilify? There's a difference between... You know, because I got robbed. Because I spent money on something that wasn't delivered. Why wouldn't I be upset about that? Nobody likes. A, there's always a bit of a risk of that. I mean, how many times have you gone to the cinema and seen a film and it was crap? That's right. And you know what I do? I, I tell people it's shit. 
and then I don't go see another movie by that particular production company that's or that director. You, that, that that's all. That's all you can do. But that's a bit different from, you know, going on the war path. Yeah, but does anybody say no? No, you need to trust Warner Brothers that the next film's not going to be shit. Well, I would say the risk involved in going to see a film is actually fairly small. One of the problems we have is that where games cost sixty dollars or whatever, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, but when you're comparing costs from the production of a game and a production of a movie, there are movies that cost exorbitant amounts of money, and there, there's the tickets per sale to go see a movie are much less than a game. Yes, I so, know. I know. I, games are overpriced. I think this is, if we were to really look at this seriously, I think that, that you know, if we, if we want to make it, if I paid 60, if I paid $60 for a game and it was really rubbish, I wouldn't be happy. Okay. But that reality that we get, it's like there are crap games and there are crap movies. And maybe you've got to just have a little bit of a distinction here. You see, if you between different kinds of development like if you go into a, a game by ea you buy a game by ea and it's absolutely rubbish and you're going around saying how rubbish the game is and how <coughs> ea have behaved shabbily for example yeah yeah you're attacking a company nobody is actually going to take that personally if on the other hand it's a small company with individuals you attack the individuals this is another story. And sometimes individual gamers have been attacked for just wanting to make the game they wanted to make. And that is the thing that I'm talking about here. You, you don't think that happens in film? You don't think that small production companies and art house films and indie, develop, uh, indie filmmakers don't deal with that shit all the time? You don't think the backlash they get? Go read Rotten Tomatoes or the TV board. Watch Red Letter yeah, Media. Yeah, but don't you get it? It's that there is a difference. It doesn't justify it, does it? I mean, it's like you can criticize a game for not delivering on its promise is one thing. But if a game doesn't, in doesn't entertain you the way you want to be entertained, it's a bit rich if that translates into abuse. Okay, uh, okay. My, my counterpoint to that would be, who's promoted? The game doesn't promote itself. The game doesn't gain sentience and go onto Twitter and say, these are the features I have. It's usually who? The game developer that goes out there and promises people things. So when you're saying, why are they lashing out at this individual? Why are they targeting this person with their ire and their rage? Well, that was the person that said, this is how it's going to be, and we're going to deliver on whatever yeah, our promises. Yeah, you're talking about No Man's Sky, but I'm, I'm, you, you keep missing the point, is that there are games that have been attacked just for being the kind of game that the developer wanted to make and i'm talking about even small releases yeah and i'm saying you there know. are comparable instances in other forms of entertainment and you, there none, are of people those, that none of those are helpful are they none of those i know because i'm in video games i you, care you about the ones in video games yeah, yeah okay but yeah but look at found footage people think that's a shit genre they, they think it's been done to death they mock found footage movies they mock the actors in found footage movies they talk shit about the companies that make found footage movies people are sick of zombie movies they talk shit about zombie mo like what i'm saying is it's not some exclusive thing that only happens to game devs yeah, Every, did like, i say it other, was no but i'm no, telling you this what, because what, i think wait, it's sorry with due respect what's the relevance to that I, because I, I am a game this, developer. I don't want this idea. Yeah, yeah I, but I don't want you to get this idea that you're somehow off in the wilderness and this doesn't I'm happen. I'm not to getting any such a flapping idea. What I'm doing is seeing what damage that, that this, this, this is doing. It's doing damage. Okay? How is it doing damage? How is it doing damage? I'll tell yes. you how it's fracking doing damage. People okay. are afraid to release their damn game. Oh, come on. What do you come mean, on. oh, come on? What do you mean, afraid? Name one person who didn't release a game because they were afraid. Go oh, ahead. Okay, Point me that game. all right. You, this this one will... Uh, Half-Life 3. Ha okay, <laughs> really? You, you have a quote from Gabe Newell saying we're not releasing it because I'm afraid. You go check. I'm asking, you brought they've it up actually as said point. They've actually said that they're not releasing Half-Life 3 because they're afraid of the reaction that it would get from fans that were passionate about the... Come on, and that's not that was that was it's an example from obviously not an indie game developer. So Gabe Newell's afraid to, that's why Half Life you 3 can has a laugh, game. but it's actually Gabe true. Newell's go afraid. do the go do the fracking research. Okay, name another one. I'm. Well, I want to name another one. That's enough for now.
I could just give you one. Just give me two. No, if you want me to do the research, I would have to spend time. And frankly, time is not a luxury I have. I've given you an hour. Fair enough. I thought you had more examples. But you can go look for yourself. All right. I can tell you that I'm not the one making the claim, man. I'm making the claim as somebody who's a game developer, and I can see what's happening. Okay. How do you think? How do you think I felt when I was going to release my game? Uh-huh. My biggest concern, well, the night was was actually a nightmare that, in my case, transpired to be. And now, as I, as more versions of the game is, what's what fills my mind? You know, I, uh, you know what, what I was, I. <laughs> and I can only tell you how it is as a game developer. I'm going to That's release fine. a game. I'm actually concerned about having to deal with uh, people who don't like my game. But it's okay if they don't like the game. The problem is, is if they don't like the game, and then they go on a variety campaign about it. Okay, what right? do you, okay this. What do you consider a campaign? I've read the the review scores well, on Amazon. I've read the stuff on Metacritic. Is that a campaign to you? Well, who the hell knows? What I do know is that one of the reviews on Metacritic is from, because um, uh, I've been told, is from a. a, a, a a, well, it's a long, complicated story, but let's just say it's uh, somebody who's ripping, who's been ripping off my own game. So it's like what somebody with else? an axe to grind. I got you. You know. So, so, I, so, I, so, so, but, but that's not the point here. The point here is because it's very easy to get sucked down into that and say, "Who? Everybody's against me." That's not. That's not the point. The point is, is I can recognise when the reaction is healthy and when it isn't i'm trying to tell you the reaction is not healthy i'm trying to tell you that the disrespect for game developers you might say there's a justification i know this story i know what you're saying you know okay it's true that there are people there are games that have been released that have really uh, disappointed the audience but we all need to figure this shit out we need to figure out how we can you know encourage developers to create new and original content not intimidate them you just don't buy the game say to people what you think of the game i mean of course but don't start saying things like lazy game dev oh okay. you don't think this, this cuts both ways though you have a review up on amazon for your game in particular where the person says i don't own the game i didn't buy the game five stars well yeah but that would be a, that's a kind of a reverse troll isn't it Oh, I don't know. Is that the well, publisher? Well, wouldn't it be? It says, I haven't seen the game. I haven't played the game. Pull it for give it five stars. What, what, who the hell? What the hell? That's not valid. That's, that's just a joke. Okay, so how do you know the person saying die in a fucking fire one star isn't just a joke too? Because it isn't. Because okay, when so you positive say, Because this comes, joke, down, this comes down to the, the whole thing about whether it's okay to disrespect, whether it's okay to, you know, whether saying such a thing like go die in a fire or whatever is is abuse or not and this is this is a very important thing here a very interesting thing because people who do what you do don't think it matters but the people who feel the effects of it to them it does matter well yeah but this is okay so there's what, a so reality to the world though you can't expect to live in a bubble of niceness and safety where people don't say mean things to you that doesn't happen anywhere um, Any yeah so is that your big plan for making the world a better place you want to oh, you, <laughs> seriously, you want to know seriously okay, seriously, okay i'll answer you if you, you want, want to make to the that? world if, if you I'll want give you to, an answer if you want to uh, make the world a better place do I'll you, give you, the, do uh, you? Yeah, would you like to do that you want my answer yeah okay i think that there is a trend right now on social media platforms like twitter and facebook uh youtube different things like that where there is a almost top-down mandate to remove certain kinds of speech to remove certain kinds of behavior, and that this falls even outside of what you would consider mean or trolling. That there might be a political agenda, or there might be a political agenda, or a financial agenda behind that behavior. So when I'm an asshole online, I'm doing it mostly, again, for my amusement, but it does serve a purpose. It, it, it does. Oh, it's so you do, a bit of you do stand for something. No, I don't. It's oh, a yes, you do. accidental, it's a secondary. Oh, but effect. you stand for but it. But it's not the objective. It's not the objective. Ah, but you still not stand for it. <laughs> no, I don't. What yeah, I'm saying sounds is, like you do. I'm I saying it's a, a little bit. Thing. You stand huh? for you stand for something a little. Do you think you make the world a better place? I make my own world a better place because I have a lot of laughs. Ah. 
So you make your world, your own world a better place, but maybe at the expense of other people's world that is not so nice as a result. Well, you, you bring up the idea of fascism and, you know, this kind of Orwellian control over what people can do. Uh, but the way you want things to be sounds exactly like that. Don't be mean. Don't say these things. Everybody should be treated nice. You can never oh, criticize in a certain... Oh, that's not what I said. Look, mate, it's very simple. It's like... Because I have this kind of conversation with, with, with people frequently online, right? And there's maybe a number of people in your audience, too, who have a problem with this. It's very easy, right, to sort of suggest that uh, it's, an, it's somehow uh, going against free speech and, and all the rest of it. What they, The problem that people have is, is not realizing that um, the way somebody feels is always real. And, and so law should be built upon that? Hey, you made a massive jump there you've gone from a to z in like a, a, yeah okay well the interesting thing is if we, i don't know if if that is uh a thing should a law probably but then how that's very difficult to sort well out. Let, let me ask you this so let okay. me give you a guideline in, in German, ah, in, you're, you're oh, european no. right yeah. and let me give you an example yeah. merkel uh recently i think three months ago uh their police force arrested numerous people across the country for what was described in the papers in germany as illegal right-wing opinions yeah so it all depends on the definition of illegal no, I think it really depends on the, the, the whole, the part that really grabs me is the opinion part of that. The, the that opinion? having an opinion, uh, an illegal yeah, opinion. A legal opinion. Well, okay, but then you, you, that could be lost in translation. If you say an illegal opinion, opinion, there is, it's, it's an ambiguous word. It can mean actually somebody expressing an opinion or somebody having an opinion. So if you express an opinion, and it's illegal that's different from having how opinion. how okay but what i'm asking you is you don't find the, that absurd that expressing an opinion saying yeah, something well, you think is illegal you know it's the problem here is is that it depends on the definition of what is illegal it's meaningless unless you check that it's very oh, well, easy okay. it's, it's very easy to jump on that and say but i mean it depends i mean let's be honest even the even in america there are certain things that you can't say because they're illegal I can tell you one thing I can say right now in America, uh, the Holocaust didn't happen. But if I said that in Germany or England or France, I could be fined or put in prison. Sure. If you were in the lineup uh, at an airport and you joke about having explosives on you, that's illegal. Mm hmm. All right. But I'm asking so you this context. Every country has its own rules on this, right? So clearly, it's not possible to have a world where you can say anything right we agree not possible i uh, know i believe in unfettered speech oh you do yep okay now if you go into the world where you believe in unfettered speech mm -hmm. there is a problem that what's the problem the problem is accountability how is it uh, how am i not accountable for what i say well that's the point is how are you accountable for what you say you can't come up and say don't say that you can't argue the point with me you can't give a rebuttal or a retort uh, to what i've said not are if, you prohibited not if, from what you, not if what you've said is has has intimidated me to the point that I don't feel able to. So you're saying words are so powerful that we should just not say certain ones in certain combinations because somebody might be intimidated and it, being no. intimidated is a subjective thing. So yes, what words is. and combinations do we say mm. can't be said? That's why you can't really put a law in, but what you can do is have a philosophy for it. So I've had this discussion many times with people, for certain people who refuse to accept and this as a game dev as well when i've expressed how i feel about something mm -hmm. and they have denied my feeling so they someone does something to me and as a result i feel a certain way and then i say to them how i feel and they deny that they deny me the right to feel it and so is disagreeing with you denying how you feel? Like, you could you tell me how you feel, but I don't agree with it. Does that deny ah, you? You it? cannot disagree with how someone feels. You tell me that you feel upset. I say, you have no reason to be upset. You're being silly. I've just denied how you feel. Yes, that's right. That's wrong. I know. You're trying to get <laughs> you, I've had this conversation. I've had this conversation before. And this is, if, if you want to know, is you've got a blind spot. And other people, to, blind spot. It's, it's like, for me, it's as clear as day. You can't see it. We will probably never agree on this point because you can't see it. 
right? I get, I, I can only try by giving an analogy, all right? So it's like, if you kick me in the leg and it hurts me, and I say to you, Oi, you kick me in the leg, it hurts. You can't deny my reality. I right? can disagree with it and oh, say, oh, you talk can't. About pussy. You, man don't know. you don't know whether it hurts I'm not or not. Saying, uh, yeah, I'm the only one who knows whether it hurts. Is. Yeah, but, but you've told me what your opinion is, and I'm laughing at you and saying, my man the fuck up. Opinion. It's not my It's not an opinion. It's a fact. That's the bit that you get confused on. You think it's an opinion. Oh, is your it's subjective not. opinion a fact? <laughs> it's not a subjective... No, it's not a subjective opinion if it's how you feel. Look, mate, if I say to you, I feel pretty pissed off right now, yeah. that's my reality. Huh? No, you don't. You love me. Right? No, that would be my reality. That's just a hypothetical you love example. You admit it. You, it's, a, it's a hypothetical example. If I say how I feel, you cannot logically disagree with me because you cannot know. I could be lying, but you cannot know. So if I told you it makes me feel upset when you disagree with me, would you agree with everything that I said from this point on? No, I would just take into account that it makes you upset and that I'd have to make a call on whether I care whether I upset you or not. So you can, you can make a judgment value on whether you care about my feelings or not. I cannot deny your feelings. If I say something to you and you feel hurt by it, and then you tell me that you feel hurt by it, yeah. I cannot deny that. And to oh, okay. try and deny it is actually where the problems start. To try and deny it is the, the most fascist thing of all, probably. Uh, okay, well, let's follow up on this. So I tell you that if you disagree with me, it, it hurts my feelings. It makes me sad in my heart. And you have to make a value judgment from that point on, whether you disagree with me or not, on future discussions. But when you finally disagree with me on something, you know that that hurts me. So are you denying my feelings? No, it's not to deny the feelings. It's to do, to do it again. It's not to deny the feelings, but then I know what I'm doing. Oh, hey, okay. Is, so should you, should you do up? it or not? You know what, mate? I hear you use the phrase, it's like man up. So I'm yep. turning that on. You man up. Because to really be, right, a man or a woman, to really be an adult, mm -hmm. right? That's what you really have to juggle with. Is that, that complexity that you say something and that someone is upset by it. And they say to you that they're upset by it. And then you have to decide what to do next. But you do it understanding that if you say it again, you'll upset them again. And then you have to accept that that was a choice that you made and that you are now deliberately hurting them. And sometimes you have to deliberately hurt someone in order to help them. So what the frack do you do? It's the same thing with uh, with doctors, right? You, well, so, I mean, should we walk hurt. on eggshells? Sometimes, like, no. <laughs> you know, what, what, no. Is, no, <laughs> what is the reality of uh, taking everybody's feelings into account? I the reality I everything is, I say and behave the, because hey, I hurt the reality someone. of taking everybody's feelings into account and being aware of them is that you make the world a better place. No, you allow yourself to be wrangled. You no, allow yourself to be subjected you to their, you, to you their still, feelings and their no, opinions you on still how do you what, behave. No, you still do what you want to do, but you do it knowing the consequences. Okay, but yeah, this is, I guess this gets back to, to my original point is, okay, so I know that you're upset by what I say. Why should it matter to me? Huh, because I'm a fellow human being, mate. We're all fellow human beings. There are yeah, kids so starving should, in Africa. Should, I'm not sending my paycheck to them. We should. We're all, yeah, we're all human beings, right? And we should all care about how each other feels. Don't you? I mean, come on, mate. When you stop caring about how other people feel, that's where, it, that's where the rot sets in. I, I'm not denying that taking people's feelings into account uh, has merit. I, I'm just arguing the point that I think we've reached uh, uh, an era, I guess. I don't know how you'd say it, an age, whatever you want to say where people become hypersensitive and hyper in I, I tune agree. with their feelings. I would agree with that. There is a hypersensitivity. I agree. It's, and, and that is a little bit worrying too. But if you want to fix it, then we have to just go back to basics. And the basics are everybody has a right to feel the way they feel. Yeah, you, again, I'm not arguing that you can't feel how you feel, but you're, you're acting like my response to it or what I say somehow undoes the reality that you're saying exists. If you really truly believe that your leg hurts when it gets kicked, me telling you to man the fuck up and it doesn't hurt that much doesn't undo the reality. So how is that, you know, like negating how you're feeling? Yeah, because it doesn't undo the reality, but it also turns the victim into the perpetrator. 
if you come up to come on this is basic bullying which i'm quite sure you you're, you're fully averse in all right uh, sure yeah yeah okay. right so basic principles of bullying go up okay. to somebody kick their leg they go ow you tell them to it they're being a baby a man the hell up all right and so in that uh -huh. way you have turned the victim into the perpetrator into it being their own fault how does telling the man up make them the perpetrator? They didn't kick themselves. You don't have the right to say that because you're the one who actually inflicted the harm. You have every right to say whatever the fuck you feel like no, saying. No, you don't. Not in that situation. Uh, I think yes, you do. I, what I, are these unwritten no, rules you're finding? No, this is called acting with respect. Something that is a shame that more people don't have. It's respect just, is earned, not given. You respect, don't just get it for existing. Yes, you do. No, at a you certain do level. not. All right, so basically you're saying to me that it's okay for you to go up to any person in the street who you don't know, who hasn't earned, you know, they haven't earned your respect, to kick them in the leg and then tell them that it's their own fault. Well, you know, I, uh, you know I'll do a stream later today where I go around kicking random people for the fuck of it. Sure, why not? Yeah, well, you see, but that, for me, tells me the measure of who you are. Yeah, I, I, right? I run streams it like tells that. me the measure of who you are, uh -huh. okay? And I put it to you that if everybody behaved that way, the world would be not a better place. And, and I, well, we're, one, we're talking about a hypothetical. No, Two, we're, we're not. About, it's become quite real because you just said... Have I kicked, have I kicked anyone? You just said you were going to go do a stream. I love that you, you have that much faith in me that anything I say you'll, you'll take is literally going to happen. Well... What's the point of opening your mouth if you're going to lie all the time? Well, we're not discussing a hypothetical. You don't well, think that I was making lied. a. Or... Did you just lie to me? Uh, yeah, that was a joke. I was pointing out how. Oh, fucking that's an interesting one. Is how do we tell the difference between a lie and a joke? Do Which... people laugh afterwards? Pretty simple. Well, it's funny because that's also another bullying tactic, isn't it? Is the one that you go and do, is... you go and do something that hurts. Good. You do something that hurts somebody, and you go, <laughs> "It's only a joke." Is that telling the truth or is that a lie? Is it okay to tell a lie if it's just a joke? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, let me... Let me uh, ah, ah, because you're very hot. What you've you're, been saying. you're very, very hot on the whole subject of lying, I noticed, because yeah, every bit there, so I put it to you. Hey, if quid you pro quo, give and take. You want to lie to me, I'm going to lie to you, right? Fair is fair. We're having an equal and open debate. If you're going to lie to me, you've done I'm that. Not I'm, I do not, I'm not lying. I'm going to lie to not, you. I'm not deliberately or intent... In, in, intending to lie, and I do my best to avoid that. To, for well, me, I'm not to, deliberately for, trying to lie. I no, was but if you tell if you tell a lie as a joke, that is a deliberate lie that is justified because you're just joking. Okay, so if I tell you the farmer's daughter joke about a guy that sleeps over at uh, you know at a farm, yeah, but that's that's fine. But you know, you know the kind of thing. Well, I no, if I, I lied about, about the, the farmer, the, I mean, my God, I've done a dishonest thing setting up that premise, right? Yeah, well, you know, but there are those jokes that are designed to hurt somebody, and then it's just brushed off because it was just a joke. <laughs> so do you, okay? So do you think I, I'm asking you honestly now? Do you think I'm going to go do a stream after I'm done talking to you, where I go around kicking people? I have no idea because I don't know enough about you. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is absurd. Is uh, it? You I, find I, it? Yes, you do? it's absolutely absurd. You want to? You know, like, we've we've gone off topic, but, but I guess it is related. I don't think that you, because you're a software developer, or even if you're not a software developer, have some right to live in a bubble. People are dicks. Welcome to fucking reality. I know you don't like the way the world is, but that is the way the world is. Rather than saying we should have some fantastic utopian vision of what reality is, maybe we should prepare people to deal with what actual reality is. No. Rather than telling uh, them to... I, I think that's bullshit. And I be don't afraid think... And be scared. We bullshit. should teach them to have total, some fucking courage total, total, to have some walls and to brave up. Complete and total bullshit. I can tell you what we don't need. What we don't need are laws, probably, because the law doesn't work for this field. What we need, right, is respect. And again, this goes back to you don't get respect just because you exist. You're not That's special. In your world. You earn it. That's in your world. Yeah, and well, my world is shared world. by a majority of people, I would say. Well, actually, if that's true, then we're all dead. We're all doomed. We're still because, alive and kicking. Yeah, I'm well, but you on how much longer? We'll never know. You know, look, mate. Uh, do you, do you know what the past was like? Like, are you, do you think people were nice and hugging each other for the last well, we 30,000 years of human we development? Know, we know what's in the history books, okay? But the history and, uh, books. We're still here, aren't we? We still, persevered and innovated, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, I know. But now, look, yeah. Well, we'll see. But look, mate, look, you're not going to make the world better by 
putting in regulations. And you're not going to make the world better by pretending that people that you can say and do what you like. And you're not going to make the world better by setting up a, a safe space for everyone where they can be coddled. Because they no, have to I turn the computer know. off I at mean, some you know, point and go out into the real world. Yeah, but it's like safe space, coddled, always going to one extreme to a fracking... Just no, that's what it is. Respect. It's a safe space, is it not? Where you cannot be told something that upsets you. That's what you want, is a fucking no, safe space. No, it's not what I want. What I want is there to be a language of respect, where respect is a value that is held by the group, society, culture you know community whatever it's respect is earned respect based is. on character not based on existence that is a ridiculous no, notion no I it's not a ridiculous me. of course it's not a ridiculous notion because as i've said if you don't believe that that respect it, it should be there as a default a certain level of it i mean obviously you build the respect so everybody has a default level of respect there should be there's the fact that they're a human you, being so you respect hitler well I said there's a base level. Right? Yeah, okay. Well, you have you a, know, base level it's a base level. It basically means there is a human being, and for being a human being, you get an automatic certain amount of respect. Right. The kind so of you respect have a certain amount of respect to Hitler and That his means that a, you know, a YouTube uh, personality is not going to come up to you in the street and randomly kick you in the leg and tell you that it doesn't hurt um, because, you, you know you have earned their respect right okay so like i mean you're so hitler deserves a, a basic level of respect well he did when he was born but then we we live you know hitler oh, so as there, a baby a before limit? he did it well i don't know really does it depends on what you do so it's actually we're not in that we're not in that much disagreement except for one thing which is that in your world nobody deserves any respect at all until if they earn you, it, they do. Until if, you they, know, if they earn mm, that respect, they until do. Until you know anything about them. Right, because I, you're a stranger to me. Why should I give you ref, uh, respect as a default? I don't know a fucking thing about because you. You could molest kids for being. fun. I'm a human being. It's that basic respect that stops you from abusing people. I, I don't abuse you. I just don't interact with you. You're a non-entity to me. Yeah, I've if never you don't met interact you before. with me, then that's absolutely fine, right? But I'm not. it's not personal you and me. I'm talking about in the world out there. Basically, look at what happens. You've got people, people are being treated <laughs> disrespectfully, right? By yeah. people who don't know a damn thing or let's say completely sum up their view of a person on the basis of some kind of data point. Well, what else are they supposed to base that respect? Oh, okay, I, all I know you is by what you present. So uh, going back to our game dev discussion, even not just Sean Murray and Hello Games, but any any game dev, let's say. If you sell a product and it's a crap product, that's what I know you on. So I, I should have a base level of respect because yeah, you're a human. Yeah, that's your view. And I'm not denying your reality, by the way. That's the way you view it, okay? And I happen to disagree. With your with, reality and your view. Well, yeah, I'm not disagreeing with that's the way that you feel. The, uh, but or the, I'm okay, putting so a, the way you feel is it, well the way the way yeah but the i feel a different way or i have a, a, a different perspective about it but you know the whole point of talking and sharing a perspective is in this often you know um, deluded hope that somebody's going to shift and a lot of the time we don't but this is look we're, we're kind of off track here it's like yeah, there we should are. be we're very just in track. the same way as there should be a basic respect between human beings which i i hope you you know leaving the the, the trolling i like to just say any old shit side of you which is sort of like thing um that behind that um, i i would hope you appreciate that there is a a similar thing that should exist within video games which is not even if look even if a video game developer creates a game that's universally panned right some level of respect needs to be given for them having made it depending on the context so if you've got somebody who's released their first video game they they you know they're a new game developer they release their first ever video game they put it up on steam or or, or somewhere else to, or the other place itchy or whatever they put it they put it put it up on there and people come along and they play the game and they don't like it and they start posting this game is shit yeah i consider that to be disrespectful because what they're not what they're missing out is the fact that this you know they could say um yeah i didn't like the game here's why that would be constructive criticism 
right? That's your view of what constructive criticism yeah, that is. is. They're my upset. View. Yeah, but That's they're upset because they paid money. They didn't well, get the I, game. Yeah, for free. but the truth is, is that it's done even when the game is free, mate. Come on. I've seen it happen even when the game is free. Or if you look, look at the culture, go on YouTube. I mean, how many No, no this, is, this is a rose by any other the... name argument. You're saying you don't like the criticism because it's not nice enough for you. No, that's but not But it's still what criticism. It's still valid. If the game is shit, the game is shit. And it's because there's such a thing as respectful criticism and unrespectful criticism. That's what I just said. You don't like the way it's said. No, it's not. Well... Is it the way it's said? When you put it that way, it sounds a bit lame, but that's not really what I am saying. What I'm saying is that you can interact in a respectful way. And I'm saying if you're a customer that just spent money you worked for on yeah, a shit product, you have a right to be angry. Yeah. You're a customer that got robbed. Yeah, you have yeah, every yeah, damn yeah, right yeah, to be yeah, yeah, irate. I mean, about. okay, then take it. I would say take it up with them. You know, it's like take it, take it up with the per where you bought the game. Ask for your money back. Complain to the developer. But that's a very different thing from going on to Twitter and proclaiming to the entire world this game is utter shit. Oh, okay. Well, who sold me the game? It's... Was it Walmart that developed the game, or was it the game dev that made the game? Well, you know what I mean. Go and talk to. Usually, the developers are very accessible, especially indie game developers. But you just said they don't want to talk to people because they're intimidated. Well. <laughs> That is one of the dangers of the intimidation that they will stop talking. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm trying. Just, I'm, I'm trying to. Just like, to be I'm real with you. you, as a customer, I, mean, I don't buy any of this, and I don't think a lot of people do. And I think well, people are starting what? to get really fucking tired of being taken advantage of. Yeah, and I think if you, you think this behavior that. is bad, you haven't seen anything yet, because consumers have had enough. Yeah. Well. Okay. But you know what? If you want to go, if hey, you haven't seen anything else, blah blah blah. blah. Now, I'll yeah, tell that's you, right. I tell you what will happen in the end is nobody will make games anymore. Bullshit! Don't act like you're a special snowflake that nobody else can do your job. Plenty of people can. Plenty of people will step up to the plate and say, "I can handle the banter and make a fucking game." Bullshit. But not <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, that is bullshit. Go oh, take a look at Greenlight. How Let many me... games you see being made by indie devs right fucking now that didn't yeah. take the place of other people that fucked up and failed? Yeah, well, I don't know. You tell me. What I know, what I know, thousands. what I know about the reality of it is, is that making a video game is like a performance these days. You have to get up on the stage. You tell me if you're watching somebody do a performance, you're going to get up in that auditorium and boo at them while they're performing. If their performance is shit, yeah, I'm going to say this sucks and I'm going to leave. Yeah, that's different saying this sucks and leaving to actually standing up in the auditorium and booing. People boo all the time. You've never heard an audience no, boo at a performance? Okay. Oh, Doesn't, come on. Do you think, come do you think on. that... Well, I don't know, because I'm over here at the, the, the other side of the world. So over here, there is um, an understanding that you have to have respect for the fact that the person has got on the stage and is performing. So... You know, well, I don't because know. Because that's just a given, because some, there's something magical about standing on a no, stage and making cool, you need respect. Do you know why it's a good idea? Because in the end, people become afraid to get on the bloody stage. <laughs> right? So, but that's the way I see it. You see it a different way. Well, oh, yeah, if, you can't take, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. Yeah, if it's see, so that's damn, what you guys so damn are destroying, always don't do it. saying. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. It's like, God, so boring. It's like you can't, if you want to see great games, encourage the fracking game developers. I'm not and, here to hold your hand and tell you you're wonderful. I'm here to pay you money for a product that you made that isn't shit. If it's shit, I'm going to say your game is shit and you failed at what you tried to yeah, accomplish. I understand that. And uh, it's a great way to go if you want to ensure that if, in my opinion, that's a great approach if you want to ensure that you start to erode uh, the creativity within the industry. And it's a difficult subject. Look, I'm not trying to dismiss this. It's a difficult, it's a very, very difficult subject, okay? And in the end, the only answer is this thing that is totally alien to you, in my opinion, because I don't think you actually understand what respect is. I don't think you understand what the simple concept of good business practices are. Well, you don't have the right to tell me about good business practices. I absolutely do. If I'm no, buying you your don't. product, you do. Yeah, not. I do. if I no. watch your game and it's shit, I'm going to tell you it's shit. You can tell me it's shit, but that's not the same thing as telling me how I should run my business. If you don't want me to tell your game is shit, maybe you should listen to the customer when they tell you you're fucking up. Yes, but as I've told you, people do not deliberately try to fuck up. Everybody's trying to do their best. I'm uh, you. Hey, you want to talk? This goes back to this trust thing. I don't know what makes you think software devs are some special, uh, you know, institution that deserves trust, and the consumer should believe their bullshit. Yeah, and then if I'm you want to carry on, on like that, action. if you carry on like that, eventually people will quit. So what? There's always somebody to replace them. Again, I don't. You, you have this. But then the industry notion. won't. The industry won't move forward because people will quit. 
Do you, do you has, think that there's never been harsh criticism before? Go look at the old news groups yeah, on, yeah, from the I 90s know. and the 80s. Bloody hell, you're talking to somebody who's been criticized. Good, then, okay, well, then you know what it's like. Alike. So, life. So, I know all about it. You don't have to lecture me about tough and it being tough. You don't have to lecture me about any of well, that. Well, apparently I do because no, you have you this idea not. that you, you keep have telling this people idea that, that we need to teach no, them special. You have the idea that just because I am talking about topics such as respect, and you know understanding and trying to appreciate i don't want to understand you i want the game that you made not to be shit i paid you money for it because because you you confuse that to so you think that because i talk about these things i'm in somehow kind of weak and no you want me to be nice about it instead no, of saying you're game of shit say well oh gosh nice golly gee he should have done better next time fact, but I, I have faith in him what i want you to do is under understand the consequences of what you do that's what I want. I want you to understand, but I don't think you can. And I'm telling you, you guys need to get over this idea that you can't take criticism and that you're somehow say that. You're fucking not. I didn't say that. That's your words. That's your agenda. That's what That's I'm basing. Story. I'm basing it on the shit it's that you've been story. telling me. Your story. It's your story. My one's a very simple one. Is that if there ain't no love, you ain't going to get anything good. And if your game is shit, you're not getting money. Yes, but that takes care of itself. Yeah, it does. So the ones that are crap fold up and die yes, like they it. should. Welcome but to if business. If your no, game is yeah, shit, you should go under. Good. Fine. All right. Well, you know. But what doesn't work is that lack of uh, love, appreciation. Love I don't is, fucking love you. Yeah, I just want a game that's not shit. asking for that. I don't think you Yeah, come on. I don't think I really want you to, frankly. <laughs> like, I, I'm not here to be your fucking friend. I no, just want to no. buy a product that's not crap. How hard is okay. that to understand? So let's see how we can make this work for you. Okay. Right? Because you're saying very clearly what you want. Yeah, just so a product that delivers what it says. Delivers what it says. Okay. Yeah. So how can we achieve that? By well, making game, by fulfilling your promises, by not lying. That'd be by a great not story. making promises. So that's the first one. By that's fulfilling happen. your promises nope. and not lying. Nope. Nope. Because I've already told you. Okay, okay, you don't want to make promises. I already right. told you. There are right. too many. Okay, here's the second condition. Many... Don't release a broken game. Yeah. Okay, great. Then we need to ensure that uh, games uh, will be, uh, you know, we need to, we need, actually that problem needs to be addressed by addressing processes within the industry. Fan, not fantastic. Working. Go tell Bobby Kotick to, to fuck off and that you're going to make the game and when the game is good, it'll be released. Well, yeah, of course, that you have to also survive, you know, it's like you have to actually sort of still be earning a living and still be able to feed yourself or the, the people that give wages to people who are working for you. So but but in principle, yes, you know, you have to figure that out. That's the difficult part, by the way. So if you have a game dev and there are 30 people working at the game dev and you have to decide whether you let them all go or you do a first day patch. Yeah. Okay. You know, the day that you're in that position, then maybe you would, you know, have some kind of moral right to pontificate about it. Well, okay. if you don't like the process, don't be a part of it. Go get another job, one where you don't have to fuck your consumer over. Go make well, movies. Go, go write books. Well, go you know, but the, uh, go make movies. Go make books. Yeah, go make. Hey, go see, do I'm something simpler. But this is that what I said. I said people just in the end just frack off, weren't they? Well, fantastic. Then they're not robbing customers. That's, yeah, that's great. I'm happy we, about that. And then, and then that's what you want. I mean, in the end, you get what you want. Yes, I want con artists to fuck off. Yeah, you're right. I want con artists con to artists, get the fuck, uh, get the fuck out of the company. industry. Yeah, that's right. So what needs to be addressed there is something to uh, fix that impression that you get that the industry is full of con artists. Because when I buy a product that's broken, why I buy a product yeah, that is I understand that. Artist. I understand that. You know, that is that not a, a con? Have I not been conned into giving you my money on a, a lie? Uh, well, it depends if whether it's really a lie or not. I, so I don't on. give a shit what's your subjective opinion on it. I was told one thing and I didn't get what I was told. I was mm. fucking conned. Yeah, well, that's the easy bit to deal with. But then you've got the one of when, you know, you have the subjective assessment of the game. And I could tell you already because I already know how this works. Let's just say that we fast forward into a world where these problems and I'm not saying the problems don't exist. I've just said that the easiest way to fix it is just not to not to hype games at all, right? Not to show anything about what they or say anything about what's in the game until it's released. Um, but uh, let's just fast forward to a world where this is fixed. Well, you know what? If it's not that, then it's going to be worrying about the quality of the work where it becomes subjective. 
And the, the reality of is in, in video game development, you have to deal with the hard and fast stuff and you also have to deal with the subjective stuff. That, that's so. fine. Deal with the subjective stuff when you get the bare bones, essential, yeah, honest components of it fixed. Can't be done. You're telling me you can't fix a process and you can't get it to where you're not lying to the customer. Generally, no, that's not what I said. What I said You is, said it can't be done. No, I said fix the bare clarify. Do you want me okay. to clarify what I said Clar can't be done? Clarify. What you were suggesting is that it's possible to get the basic features done and then ensure that the game is, say, entertaining. So you get... No, I said deal with the subjective criticism after you make sure that the game you're selling functions the way you said it will and has the features you said it will. Yes, right. So that's what I'm saying is that, that hard, the stuff that is measurable, right, interacts with the stuff. The stuff that's subjective interacts with the stuff that's objective. It's the nature of the game, right? And because of that interaction, it's not so easy. I understand what you're saying and I wish it was that easy, but it really isn't that easy. I, I don't want to hear about how hard it is. I don't care when I'm giving that's you my money how fucking hard it is. I understand that you're fracking well fed up with that. That's why I said the best way of solving the problem is no pre no pre orders, no um, reviews beforehand. Uh, the game is just released, and there you go. Okay, because then there's nothing, no promises. Everybody can ensure that what's put on the box is exactly the same as what is in the game. Well, it won't be in the box because you'd have to wait another month. So it would be online only. And what is written on the, the, the blurb is exactly what is delivered. And that problem has gone. And that can, is a solvable issue. That is entirely solvable. And, Fantastic. And I, and I, I'd I wish, love to have game I'm, news be like a newswire where the only information you get is so-and-so is developing a game, nothing else. Yeah. We're working on something, that's the news we have for yeah, you. Yeah, that's it. And, and that I, I think would be great and that would solve your problem entirely. And there's nothing really wrong with that. And in fact, I, it would be nice, I think, if it went that way because it would solve a lot of it. Of course, it wouldn't help with what happens after the release because what you will get then is still certain sections of the audience jumping up and down as they start complaining about this or that of the game and doing all this other kind of stuff. But at least your point could be addressed. All right. So that's the so we actually reached, I think, a, a conclusion here. First one is that's the way to fix the video game, this problem in the video game industry. Right. Yeah, stop lying and deliver no, on your it's promises. Not, okay, well, you like to use the word lying. But what else fact, is it when you say one thing is going to happen and it doesn't happen? Is that not uh, a lie? I well, mean, okay, lie. it's to do with the intent. The intention was not to deceive you, The intent, but that's what happened, okay? Can I just make it clear? Fine, it's, rather sure. like, it's rather like, you know... I, you didn't mean to lie to me, but it happened, I get you. Yeah, it's easy. It's like, oh, I kicked you in the leg. Oh, you're hurt. Oh, okay, uh... Yeah, sorry about that. Wasn't actually what I intended. Okay, which then yeah, except either... in that example, I'm not giving you sixty dollars for the privilege of you kicking yes, me in the leg. Yes, I understand I... that. God, you have to go on about it. We got that. Yes, we because I want to be that. At home that the customer is getting fucked. That this isn't some hypothetical philosophical conversation. I'm exchanging yeah. money for goods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. You're exchanging money for your entertainment because in the end, that's what's happening. People are entertaining you. You're giving them money. You want to be entertained. Hey, hey, look, and that's that's how that can be solved. So are we good on that? That's how to solve that. Then yeah. the second point is, is how does it happen? You like to call it lying. You could say that technically, um, although it would need to be seen in every case, could be, you know, the point here is, is that um, people, it, when it happens that features are taken out of a game, it happens because of reality that was exposed during the development process. And either you believe me or you don't that making video games is that tough that you have to do it and i would love it if there was a little bit of education so that the audience could understand that but maybe they don't need to understand that if we simply don't say anything about the game before it's released then they don't care right then it doesn't matter but if you are interested in why it is that a game has to change its course during development watch a video game developer make a game and you will see why and that's one of the reasons why i do what i do every night here making my game in front of people why because i want to be honest and fracking open even with my release people could see the state of the game from april so they could always see what was in they could always see what was going to be delivered it, they could see me actually making the final build when the build was done they saw me actually when the launch happened they saw the launch here 
I'm trying to address that that way as well, which is the one of being completely open and honest, maybe giving some aspirations for the product, but always saying, look, there's no guarantee for this. Um, and if you're interested, you can see how it's working out. Right. I mean, that's that's it. I, that's what I'm trying to do. So I appreciate that. And for me, that's very important to try. It doesn't mean I'm always perfect or that some people might not feel misled. But you know what? people there are people who will there are people who complained in, in the case of my game about being misled but they didn't actually understand the material that was out there so it actually depends on what you also see and what you're also exposed to and maybe it's important that there's a little bit of trust um that goes around so that people don't immediately jump to conclusions so they don't just sort of react to what somebody else has said but actually go and do a little bit of research you know before they say something you know that's untrue and this is, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? I, I prefer more game devs were open. Yeah. I, have, I have no problem with that. Well, I'd love open. if they were more open about their development. Right. If, they, if they, Good. Yeah, that's what I, I, I like game devs being more that's open. What yeah. I, that's, what I'm, that's what I try to do. But I can tell you from my own experience that just because you're doing it, it doesn't mean that people are going to be listening. They'll still cook up their stories. Yeah, so, and my response to that is people in every industry, no matter what they do, will always take heat from either informed or uninformed sure, idiots. Absolutely. You need to learn to deal no, with it. Yeah, well, no, I don't need to learn to deal with it. because If you I want to function as a human being, yeah, I you do. I do not need to learn to deal with it because I already know. I already came up with a strategy for dealing with it, also a strategy for dealing with myself. But I'm just making the point, and you can either accept it or you can't, or you accept it or not. The point that it's also a choice for the people in the audience how they behave and really if you behave better you will in the end get better games and by behaving better i don't mean not being <laughs> negative i don't <laughs> mean i don't mean not then. being negative if things don't work but it's a case of being constructive with it constructive criticism versus abuse ultimately that's the balance here i'm not the only one who calls some of the things that have been going on abuse you have well, yeah, there may be, there may be other people that do too. It doesn't make them right. You could have a whole chorus of people singing that it's abuse. It doesn't mean that it is. Yeah, but that's how you decide whether or not it's abuse is something we all have to do together. And I can tell you it's, dis it's very difficult to do that when the loudest voices are the ones who are hurling abuse and it causes other people to be afraid the to speak out. The loudest voices always are the ones that are hurling abuse. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't think I deal with that, with the shit I do? Uh, yeah, I do it for fun, but yeah, I get shit all the time. You fucking shake it off and you move on. Yeah, but like I said, you're not standing for anything. I am. Just, okay, so if you're standing for something, if it makes standing, it more? If you're standing for something, it's harder. You wouldn't oh, know oh. because you don't stand for anything. Oh, okay, so we got two gay guys, right? Uh, one gay guy is an activist, one isn't. If I call them both faggots, you're telling me it doesn't upset them equally because one's not standing for I activism? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. I'm saying it's a ridiculous premise to act like you can't just learn to fucking deal with it. Like, if your behave will give you better games. No, how about if I give you money, you give me better games? Yeah, look, you keep going around. It keeps going around in circles here. Because because right? it's money. It is because a business. we covered that. It's dealt with. Okay, but... You, I'm being, as, a, as a game developer, I'm being open. And I think we will see more game developers being open. We're not going to see more developers being open, though, if the audience is going to be chucking bloody crap all the time well it tough takes, shit for no, them. Tough, no it's up yes to, it's up to you do you want you want game developers to be more open no it's up to you no, do you want do my you money want, do you I, do you i'm asking you said you wanted game developers to be more open you'd like that you said that. no i said i want them to be more open if they want my fucking money oh you want them to be more if you want your right okay well i can tell you why game developers you know i some people have called me mad for doing what i did what did i do getting on and continuing my stream do you know how do you know how do you know do you know do you know how do you know do you know it's not easy when I've life got, isn't easy i understand oh, fucking hell yes life is not easy okay so just dismiss what i'm about to say i think we're well, just because, about because you keep coming back to this idea that you you should be given respect and if we give you respect we'll get better games and you'll be more open if i'm me, saying no it should be the me. default of the industry for you to make good games and be open that's yeah, what i'm saying it doesn't work that way it's like I, saying, I'm telling it's you, like the customer, saying, it should work mate, that way, if and if it doesn't a, end up working that way, you guys are going to lose a money. If you've got football team, and you, the whole crowd just boo them all the time, do you think it's going to improve their performance? If there's a football team, does a football team suck? 
Is it going to improve their performance? I'm asking you, is the reaction they're getting because they, they suck at the game? It doesn't matter, whatever their level it is. It absolutely whatever, does. Whatever level it is, do you think it's going to make them perform better? I, I, again, this goes back, are they shit at the game? Are they going, it doesn't matter. Whatever level yes, they it are, does. it's not going to ever, it never makes anybody perform do you, better. Do you think the amount of abuse a dev gets is not dependent on the product they produce? It, it's not a linear We're relationship. We're talking the difference between a stadium booing that team because they're shit at the game and one or two assholes booing the team because they just don't like them. Yeah, I'm just making a point. So if you believe in the power of booing, keep booing. If no, think, I don't even know the I think dollar, we, 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 and I've that's spent, where I spent my money. I'd have to say, I spent, we spent like two, two, two and a half hours nearly, oh, yeah, this nearly is on gone, this. So we're going to have to while. start yeah. rapping because I actually need to get on, do, because this is actually development time I'm, I'm, yeah, that, I'm, that's take, fair I'm enough. taking up. Right. Half hours. But I just, I just say, mate, if you have a choice right now, I'm going to give you a choice. Yeah. Uh, what you're going to do to help me in my work as a game developer you can choose to encourage me you can choose to boo me so which mm -hmm. is it going to be i'll encourage you when you make a good product and i'll give you my money that's my encouragement you're profiting off of me as your encouragement yeah okay well that's that's fine so what's with the thing where you're dragging out all of the reviews on my game when i criticized your tweet why did I bring up your game? Because you're defending a, a developer that made a shit product and people were upset about. And then when I went and looked at your game, it had a ton of reviews, people yeah, saying that it was true. buggy, that it was bad. Have you and so played... it makes it look like you're defending the game because you made a shit game too, not because you believe Sean Murray is innocent. Yeah, but ha, assumption. You made yeah, assumption. welcome to how human beings operate. We're yes, not fucking that's right. computers, are we? That's right, that's right. But you see, that's the thing is actually, you, that's what a hue meme is. More like a computer. So you just make the assumption. And then it goes back to the, that is the most autistic shit to say, man. Yeah, well, that's what you say. Pick something. I don't think Your chat will agree with me. No, pick no, something I, different. Pick anything different. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Any other thing you want to say, but that is the most autistic shit. Well, that's, if heard. you think so, good for you. I do. I do think it's the most autistic good. I, that's shit. That's fine. But I think it's dead on because I've been looking for an opposite to human that isn't machine. Could you say human, machine? The real battle oh, of the world is not between That is just some hardcore human... LARPing Vulcan shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you think so, that's fine. You I mean, know. okay. Do you, want me to do, <laughs> do you want me to do a live long and prosper thing? Does that help? Yeah, yeah. yeah throw up the... Uh, Look, throw mate, up. the point is that, you know, either, either you believe that... Either your standpoint... I think that what's happened is, is that your perspective... I don't understand why. This is the way you look at it. Your standpoint is now that you're baseline that you have for any game developer is negative it feels that way that you no, no I'll, I'll be honest with you just to close this out because i don't want you to get the impression that i hate all game devs i don't there yes. are a lot of game devs that have made games that have been well it would help if I you made that to clear be, wouldn't it i i do when i leave positive reviews okay. when i give them positive feedback yeah. when i link their products and oh, say good. these guys made a great game go good. purchase their game when i good. when i talk about how much i enjoy their product good well that's fine and when you when you are being negative about a product, that's absolutely fine. What I'm talking about is basically, in the end, intimidation. Now, you've admitted that you you do know about bullying. Well, yeah. You, you Well, to be fair, you told me I would know about it. You said I'd be, you know, uh, I can't remember how you phrased it, but yeah, you said, I know. Oh, you're very I, familiar I suggested with it. that, and you seem to agree with me, but I, I so I read it that way. Maybe I misunderstood well, uh, you. Well, I'm a hue meme, so what do I know? What do I know? <laughs> All right, well, you want, to call, you want to call it here? I'll let you get back to your game. Not, you, you aren't when you say that. Look, mate, it's actually, it was, it was okay. I mean, I, I have no idea what the, what the audience are out there doing, but um, your audience, but it was actually, uh, I don't know we achieved much. But we had a conversation, there whatever. Was, you know. there, was, there was one thing which we can agree with, okay, uh, and that we do agree with, and that is that it's a good idea, perhaps not to have pre-orders and to say anything about your game before it's released. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, I, I think you should just let it stand on its merits. You let it stand on its merits. And some of that other stuff is a bit contentious, I understand, and maybe I didn't describe it so well. But I do I do think, in the end, it's a matter of how to make the world a better place. You know, and That might sound all kind of lovey-dovey, but I'm actually passionate about that. And it's one of the things that gives me a motivation to keep going. <laughs> okay, 
Well, well uh, yeah, uh, like, we, we disagree on stuff, whatever, that's fine. Well, we, but, we I mean, yeah, it's because I've done it before, day. you know, that's the thing. So I'm trying to do it again, which is kind of interesting. I mean, okay, if I, well... If I, if I didn't do it again, I would have died a very sad person because... I never, I never tried. So I got the chance to do it again. So I'm trying to do it again. But why? Because I want to entertain people. I want them to have fun. I mean, that's my motivation, right? That's why I do what I do. It's for that. It's for a good motivation. A good well, motivation, hey, uh, you, right? went, you went on stream. You got 1,200 people watching. For better or worse, you were open with them about what you believe. I may disagree with you, but at yeah, least you were that's open fine. about we're it. Yeah, open, you know. But that's why I do what I do in an effort, in my own little tiny insignificant way, to make the world a better place. And if that sounds corny, I accept that, but that's me. That's that's how I get up in the morning. That's what uh, yeah. I stand for. I, and I understand. Right. I think it's just a little too utop or utopian. No, of it's a, you and I think it's getting too intermingled with the concept of just basic business practices. Well, but I that's, what that's, that's okay. But, you know, business practice, it's not why I get up in the morning. I get up in the morning because I want to do what I was born to do in the hope that I will entertain people and that they will enjoy, as I have done in the past. I don't know whether I will succeed or not. I don't know whether I'll be here next year. I don't know, but I'm going to keep trying. So anyway, thanks uh, for thanks for the chat. Okay. We'll draw a line under that, I think. All right. Well, have, uh, have fun with your game development, and uh, yeah, it was interesting. All right. Take care now. Bye. Yep, take care. Well, that was very interesting. So I'm going to just let everybody clear out and then uh, <laughs> uh, I'll be able to see the, the regulars in here. And I'm going to carry on doing what I'm doing. Ah, that was one there. I will kill you, Dino. Well, that's that was nice. Yes. Well, we just let it all sit out. I mean, I can't really ban everybody right now, you see. See, look at this. It's amazing. Can you see all of that? Ah. Now, carry on enjoying your spamming please please do that i mean i do want you to have fun so if you're having fun spamming carry on spamming i'm taking a break and i'll be back and uh keep at it do your spam spam we all want spam we all want that lot of crap don't we very good i'll be back soon
between the pebble and the grass, there's a space. I feel my heart race as I chase the dream. It fell into the crack, it fell down somewhere. I think if I try hard enough, I might. The signal comes in strong, it turns my head. I chase my way back to the bed. I know, I feel, somewhere it's real. The dream, the dream. Till I ended up right here again. <laughs> 